I actually anyway. read um, a bit more on that quote, and um, I think that quote is actually wholly and entirely misrepresented. Hold on, so yes, yes! The, the, like, the Kedivarite like, of Egypt was literally like... <sighs> I mean, I think it's the right thing to do. I think that the best thing that Israel should do for stability in the region is Israel needs to aggressively pursue a two-state peace plan with the Palestinians. Part of that is going to involve the dismantling. Okay, I think last time, I just want to set kind of the stage, but I think last time we talked about legal settlements, right? And we, I think, agreed. I don't know. The settlements are illegal in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Um, there was an advisory opinion issued by the ICJ saying as much in 2004. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we do agree. And then I think you didn't like my character, or you disagreed with my characterization of why I think Oslo was bad and why I think Arafat was really dumb for Oslo and that I felt like the Israeli leadership took advantage of the situation because Arafat was desperate because he got shunned from the Arab world post the Gulf War. And that's kind of where we were, right? And we were talking about some Shlomo bin Ami uh, quote. Mm -hmm. And we got that quote. Well, I got that. I thought the quote was in the book word for word because that's what he said. Uh, that's where he said it was. Uh, I bought the book. I don't see the quote word for word, uh -huh. so I, I I guess I'm I'm wrong there. Uh, you can see my confusion when he says that it is in the book because he says in the video like if I were a Palestinian I wouldn't have accepted Camp David and I put this in the book. Those were his words. Um, yeah, I actually anyway. read um, a bit more on that quote, and um, I think that quote is actually wholly and entirely misrepresented. Um, it doesn't, the way that that quote has been presented time and time again, that I hear it because I've heard okay. some people present it and then I've heard you present it, is, is the, the character of the quote is basically saying that like that deal was so bad, I would have never accepted it. But it seems like when you read the context surrounding that quote, what the quote is saying is that like the conditions as this were such in Palestine and such in Israel, that like if I were a Palestinian at the time, I probably wouldn't have accepted it. But it, well, I don't think it was in reference to the deal itself. I think it was in reference to the other, um, things that were kind of happening around the Palestine-Israel at well, the time. Well, doesn't he say right after that, if he were, a, like, he, I think he says, if I were a Palestinian, I wouldn't have accepted it, but Taba is the problem, Clinton parameters is the problem, right? No, he like, didn't say they were problems, two, he said those two were truly missed opportunities. Yeah, 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 that, that's what I mean. Like, a problem for the Palestinians not accepting, right? That's the issue. Not that they didn't accept uh, Camp David. Well, but Camp David made the next two, everything that happened afterwards was basically impossible. What do you mean by everything that happened after, like after Camp David? Because Camp David was um, uh, Ehud Barak, right? Yeah, correct. And after Camp David failed, the second intifada began, and that was before, was, I believe, the Taba summit, and there was no chance for peace at that point, because there's no shot that anybody in Israel, like the conversations are completely over at that point. I believe the second intifada started before uh, So I think, Taba. I think the, the, the conversation was over when the, re, the election, came up in Israel towards the end of Taba. I, I wouldn't say that, like, I don't think they would have been negotiating at Taba if they felt that there was no chance for peace, right? Can we can we agree on that? Like, they um, have, they like, might have been met. negotiating for it, but the public wouldn't have been on board with anything. I think that's kind of speculative. Well, did whatever. anything come sure. out of Taba? I think they were close. That's what both okay, sides so said. Okay, so nothing came they out said. of it, and then afterwards there's a transition from uh, from a left-leaning party to a, a right one, right? So, I mean... Which, which, which made, yeah, which made it impossible. I think the, the right-leaning... Whatever. Okay. There, there, was, there was negotiations. I think uh, the quote, you can disagree with it. You asked me to do a little bit more digging because I believe Shlomo Benami in that video also referenced how um, Rabin preferred the cheap price that Arafat offered as opposed to the official del Palestinian delegates that were negotiating in Washington and kind uh -huh. of went behind everyone's back. So I found more information on that if you're interested. If that's not of interest, we can skip it. Yeah, sure. Show um, it to me. I'll give it that. So what happened from, from what I've read, during the Madrid conference, the PLO was not allowed to... Wait, wait. To, 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 can you just link me? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna link you. Do you have access to the book, the chapter uh, in his book, "The Scars of War: Wounds of Peace" by Shlomo Benjamin? 
Um, I bought it. I don't. I don't know how I would share the pages with you. I can take screenshots, but I there think maybe a better way. Um. Oh fuck. Let me give me one second to create an account. I think you can borrow it here. Hold on. Wait, let me, I need to make an account here, guys. One sec. By the way, you should uh, come with me to the West Bank sometime. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Wait, why? What's the problem? I'm not gonna get a fucking terrorist attack. Hell, hell no. Please verify your internet archive account. Seriously? Oh my god, yeah, this fuck me. You had to be good content. Okay, fuck it, never mind. You're sending me screenshots. Or someone needs to link me a different place. Can you send me screenshots of the pages you want to read? Uh, I, I can send you screenshots, yeah. Uh, and if somebody finds the actual book, because I don't want to like be selectively choosing parts, you know? So sure. if you want pages before, pages after, let me know. Uh, I will send you... Is your name Paul? Bro, your I, mic, I, you just cut out on like 80% of whatever you just tried to say. Wait, did I cut out? Am I cutting out right now? Not now. Or is it good? Okay, is it asshole? Is that like how you meant it to be? Axhole, like asshole? I mean, or my name, the name was like my uh, username in MapleStory like 12, 15 years ago. I was like an axe crusader. Ah. I know. I thought. And I thought. I thought you was trying to do something. That's my bad. Uh, I just came in here because I'm curious about something. Let's Steve. Uh, how much do you know about Tabuscus's case? No, not From enough. Could you ask Kelly? Ago. She's the one that like throws time returns over this shit. I don't know anything. No, about yeah, yeah. She's no. yeah. No, no. We're talking about it because he just joined the. He just joined the Kicker Keep server. And yeah, she, she feels some type of way about it. But I'm confused because. We've had Hash, we've had Sky, we've had a billion, like, Uber, we've had a billion people that, you know, you could say crazy shit about, and that wasn't that big of a deal. So I was like, is it really that bad with a guy like Tabuski? So you don't know that much about it, right? Nope. So you would have a problem if we had him on? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to answer. I don't, I don't know anything. What? I don't know anything. Well, like, if, for instance, let's say you have him on, and it turns out he's like a serial child rapist. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, this guy probably shouldn't be on. But I mean, I don't as know. far as I've seen, it's like his allegations were from 2013. Apparently, he drugged his girlfriend and graped her. There's another woman that says that he did the same thing, but there's also other fucking shit out there that the evidence is really not that great. And da -da -da, it's all over the place. Either way, it's just fucking allegations. It's not something that's concrete. It's nothing that was ever confirmed. He, was, he wasn't convicted, is what I'm trying to say. So with you know barely anything extra added onto it i didn't give you that much information would you have a problem having him on um jesus christ 2013 yeah it's yeah, exactly 2013 he was like only 30 years old back then yeah le lean on it leave it up to kelly okay i'm asking you dickhead i'm not i'm not here like oh like, i i want to know your opinion Nell, does she own half your brain? I don't know enough about it. That 
I, he, I don't know you enough don't... about the details of the case, and right now I've got three hours before I gotta do that show. I'm not gonna sit here and fucking dig through his fucking lights, figure it out. If the allegations are super credible and it seems like he's like an unrepentant fucking rapist, then I'd say probably not. Leave him the fuck off. But if it was some retarded show like we smoked weed and then we fucked, and I realized that I was only I was only 29 years old at the time, basically a child, and I didn't really want it, blah blah, then fuck her. I don't care. So I, I don't know what the allegations are like. I don't know the strength of them. I don't know what's come out about it. So that so I have no, I can't give you an informed opinion. I have no idea. If you want, I'll err on the side of caution. I'll say fuck no. Um, but if it's but if like the allegations are bullshit and you and Kelly know enough about them and you take that then fuck it then bring them on I, I, I don't know though okay well okay oh my god to to bus Dude, I said okay. allegations Dude, relax why the fuck are you so on edge I said okay you could go back to whatever you are doing right now okay golly and trust me I googled it I don't think you'll be able to find it quick because it's so fucking old like it takes a minute to find that shit God, dang He's a renowned, multi-talented American entrepreneur. Toby is a musician, actor, and comedian, all of which he thrives on. Uh, some years back, okay. Control F, rape. Known to be a legendary YouTuber. Toby says, I'm Dad's 26th so famous for the rumors of ex-girlfriend April Fletcher made rape charges against him. Yeah, I read this. It really doesn't help that much. Yo, chat, listen, every single time I join, you, you guys fill me up. You f Listen, the Reddit has been a bit dry, you know what I mean? I don't go on there anymore, but every once in a while, you know, I put, the, everyone, I put the queue in and I don't see nothing. It's kind of boring. Kind of miss the hate threads. What's going on? You guys have gotten soft recently. It's a bit disgusting. All you could do is just type in chat the same thing. Oh my god, Q is fucking so annoying. Yeah, join the line, dickheads. Jeebus. Okay. You fell off. True. Before I start, I want to say well, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I understand that I'm setting myself to be attacked and more. We don't care. Okay. The hardest thing I've been mentally and physically abused by Toby Turner. Okay. Already off to a rough start. I don't know why the fuck you would include any mental abuse or whatever bullshit, unless there's some crazy shit, but let's find out. All right. I first met Toby when he was working, or I was working at E3 in June of 2011. I had flown there from Georgia and he was hosting a gig. He added me on Facebook as I was returning home. Eventually, my number. We texted almost daily and FaceTime each other, telling me that I should move there and that he needed a female host for his new gaming show. So a month after E3, I had brought a, um, or I bought a new car and packed myself for LA. I didn't know this at the time. This would be one of many broken promises. Good for you dipshit why would you accept a deal like this and buy a new car and move without getting anything in writing or a contract first or whatever okay standard child behavior i was writing way too many details when i realized that i have way too many things to tell happen in five years okay just why not pick what's actually important so i'll cut out the small stuff i was being cheated on since day one don't give a fuck um you'd say he's worried okay control f okay 2013 was when the drugs really started okay uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail with this, okay? The only thing that actually matter, but this is when the abuse started getting very violent. Okay, by this time I was conditioned to always make sure he was happy and I had so many panics and anxiety when I was with him because I never wanted to have sent out. We're writing most of his parodies and songs together. It's, it's, huh. um, kicks the stove, punches the pantry. Okay, control F, rape. Okay, once I feel like I can maneuver a car the next afternoon, I drive home. I really shouldn't have drove, but I needed to, I shouldn't have driven, I have drove, but I needed to escape him. I come home and my roommates are in the kitchen. They'd be so mad if they knew I was still talking to Toby after the blatant rape. Okay, what is, where's the blatant rape? 2013, I came over to help him with something. I'm not sure what, my friend Alyssa was having a party I wanted to go to and he kept telling me not to leave. I told him I had to go, he was being flirty and cute. I was conditioned to enjoy the tension in the game, but I told him I was going. He asked if I would take a shot with him just one before I left, yes. I know I should not have even said yes and taken a shot before driving, I'm aware, but you have to understand at this time drugs were running rampant in the house and I was so exposed to drug and alcohol because I was just used to it. I said okay and took a shot with him instantly. I knew something was wrong. At first I thought it was shitty vodka. I even asked what vodka it was. It's the worst I've ever had. Then I saw his face and I realized I knew what that bitter taste was. I asked him if he had slipped something in my drink. Insert cute with Griffin voice denying it. I asked a bunch of times and he denied it. But I already knew the answer. Bubbly Rick Ross. I already know that people who die from MDMA Molly have always been mixing it with alcohol. What? That both of those together are a deadly mix? That Toby is a drug? Okay, this person is fucking retarded. If there's a more credible allegation, then I'll read it. I don't know who this person is. I regret ever having read a single word they've written in their entire no, life. No, that's the main one, though. Okay, I don't care. The then I don't one. give a fuck. If he wants to come on, he can come on. That's fine. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's W Toby from you. Okay. 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 W take. W take. Go on. All right. That's it for me. Uh, Axel. You can unmute, go back to your conversation. All right, take care.
Anyway, uh, yeah, I sent you three screenshots. The last one, it's kind of out of order. The last screenshot I sent you was the, f the earliest in the book, so it's page 207. Okay, let me read this, okay? Sure. Of the Palestinians in the Madrid Peace Conference, uh, signaled that the old warrior was now entering the new pragmatic stage of his political career. Give me another example in history, he would say, in a group of Israeli journalists who came to see him in his headquarters in Tunis, where one side allowed the other to dictate who his representatives at a negotiation must be. We agreed even to this because we desire peace. To further underline his conciliatory approach, Arafat could have added how he had ordered the exclusion of Saab Arakat from the second session of the conference after he had aroused the anger of the Israelis by ostentatiously wearing a Palestinian uh, kefia during the first. More more importantly, when it came to the actual positions in the negotiations with Israel, oh, we saw that incident, guys. You remember watching that video? Um, when it came to the actual positions in the negotiations with Israel, it seemed to become clear that Arafat's men in Oslo were far more accommodating than the Palestinians from the territories and the bilateral negotiations with Israel and Washington. Oslo was for Arafat more a political maneuver aimed at recovering the control of Palestinian politics and affairs than a peace initiative. He went to Oslo to save the PLO from declining into oblivion, not necessarily in search of a peace formula. Arafat needed a, to establish a foothold in the Palestinian territories at all costs, even at the expense of an agreement with Israel that did not secure vital Palestinian aspirations, such as the right of self-determination and end Israel's policy of settlements and an acceptable solution to the issue of Jerusalem and refugees. On all these bones of contention, the Oslo Accords are either silent or vague and ambiguous. As to the Israeli side of the equation, it was Rabin's leadership and a sober interpretation of the new realities that made the difference. Reserved, taciturn, taciturn, impatient, Rabin was a man of action who despised theatrical gestures and hollow rhetoric. He entered his second term as prime minister as a mature statesman who, fully aware of the flaws of his first term, was now determined to rise to the challenges of the changing times. He saw what he called a real window of opportunity to make peace while the Soviet Union was disappearing as a power the Arabs could rely upon. Rogue states like Iran and Iraq had not yet developed nuclear capabilities and Islamic fundamentalism, which produced most of the terrorist capabilities against Israel and threatened the moderate Arab regimes ready to make peace with her could still be curtailed. Rabin was probably one of the first world leaders to fully grasp the meaning of the strategic threat posed by Islamic fundamentalism. This is very prescient from Rabin, nice. Uh, to cope with this combination of risks and opportunities, he believed that peace and, as always, liked to insist, economic development as well were the answer. Let's make peace, let's have regional development, bring up the standard of living of the people in the Arab countries, and in this way answer the main threat, he explained in an interview. Um, okay, that was the first thing. So, so far, yeah. this seems to be furthering the idea that Arafat was fucking things up. I'm not seeing where Israel is fucking things up or like taking advantage of this. Sure. So, I can continue to read if you want, or you can pause here and tell me something. Yeah. Second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the next part you can read. This is like two pages later. It's the first screenshot I sent you. So there's one starting with social and political elite. Uh, yeah. Social and political elite can usher in a practical change of policies is never automatic or immediate. Its effects is cumulative in any case, never clearly ca causal. It does, however, help shape the zeitgeist in a way that might create a more pro um, propitious environment for a change of policies. Professor Yehoshaphat Har Harkabi, Harkabi, Harkabi? Harkabi, uh, who served in the past as chief of Israel's military intelligence, triggered a heated national debate in an essay he had published in the early 80s where he questioned the wisdom of Bar- Coach Ba's rebellion against the Roman Empire in AD 132 to 135. More than in a critique of Bar Co is it Co is it Kokba or Coach Coach Ba Kokba? That's definitely Kokba? not an Arabic word. I'm okay, not sure. Bar Kokba uh, and his spiritual mentor Rabbi Akiva. Uh, Harkabi was interested in accusing their present-day successes of leading suicidal policies. Bar Kokhba's rebellion and the practical annihilation of the J Jewish yeshuv in Palestine that followed the brutal repression by the Roman legions, a chapter in national history that had been idealized to the past as the heroic stand of a nation fighting for freedom, was now denounced by Harkabi, or Hak, or Harkabi as a reminder to contemporary politicians and generals of the catastrophe that might be repeated here and now if the nation continued to be led by the religious messianism of its rabbis and the military adventurism of its generals. Bar Kokhba's, or Koba's, Bar Koba's revolt, Harkabi explained, was not a heroic enterprise. It was a blind march to a national disaster that was almost tantamount to a holocaust. His warning was that the lesson of the Bar 
uh, Koba episode in Jewish history could only be that Israel's messianic obsession with the territories, the refusal of its leaders to assume realistic positions, move away from messianic hallucinations, and come to terms with the need for compromise and moderation might end in another national holocaust. Rabin believed that he had made a deal with the PLO out of a sense of healthy realism, and only after had he, he had exhausted all other possibilities. The Jordanian option was now dead, Hamas was gaining ground in the territories, especially in Gaza, and the terms for a settlement with the local leadership proved to be too high. It was either Arafat or the Hamas, there is no third partner, he said in an Ameri to an American journalist. It was time to end the masquerade with the West Bankers, he concluded. But the truth of the matter was that Rabin was maneuvered to opt for a deal with the PLO in Oslo rather than for one with the local Palestinian leadership in Washington by the Perez team, whose members managed to convince the PLO delegation to lower its price for a deal to a degree that the local leadership could never accept. Uh, Arafat's cheap price for a settlement turned out to be, however, a tactical plot aimed at sidelining the local leadership and gaining a foothold in the occupied territories, from which it could move to the next stage of his wider strategy. Gaza and Jericho, the base that was that he was given in the Oslo Accords, were to Arafat like the Fakahani Fak Quarter in Beirut, from which he controlled throughout the 1970s the life and the politics of the entire Lebanese state. The eventual collapse of the Oslo process into an all-out Israeli Palestinian war for which successive Israeli governments need. Do you want me to read the next part, or? Um, yeah, but I mean, we can go to the next page. But are you starting to see like there was negotiations after Madrid with like the actual experts and negotiators for the Palestinian delegation in Washington, and they stopped after like the ninth conversation, the ninth like meeting. Uh, because they were like very firm on their requirements of like pre-67 borders on refugees on et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. And if you read the wiki page on the Madrid Madrid conference, you'll see those negotiations like starting in, in some um, actually the one that led those those negotiations from the Palestinian side, his name was uh, Haider Abdul Shafi and he eventually after he found out about this back channel, he like quit from the PLO. He was like, you guys are idiots for not actually asking for what we need and this is just going to prolong the situation give israel the upper hand and another delegate from the those negotiations here let me not just say these names because i don't think you'll be able to spell them if you wanted to look at them up um so here's a wiki for another one of the delegates and you can see what he says about what happened he was one of the delegates at madrid conference and they had rejected this like yeah, you can just look at the mid. Uh, I'll tell you what part to read real quick. Just of this guy's opinion, obviously. Just he later said that the PLO had not. panicked at the thought that Hanan Ashwar Ash Ashrawi. And Jesus fuck might assume the leadership of the Palestine national movement at Madrid he said he had said we sought to consolidate Palestinian unity it was crucial that Israel should not succeed in erecting a wall between internal and external representatives he had complained that Oslo was decided behind the back of the Palestinian delegation to Madrid and by extension behind the back of the Palestinian people he had described the Oslo negotiations as a technical and political disaster complaining that while the Madrid team had been well briefed and had 600 experts at its disposal the PLO's Oslo negotiations were conducted by amateurs um, Israel, he had said, took gross advantage of the naivety of the Palestinian negotiators, but the result was so disastrous, so unjust, that even the signatories couldn't make it stick. This is why democracy is so important in these cases, because it renders the negotiators accountable to the people, answerable for every document they sign. He said that after 1993, he and his were conducting a struggle on two fronts against the Israeli occupation and against the Palestinian Authority. Not only were our leaders completely inept at negotiating with Israel, but they were rapidly transforming themselves into a gigantic security apparatus, consuming 34% of the budget. The PA, he has complained, has functioning along the same lines as the totalitarian Arab governments that gave it refuge, trying to control every aspect of life. Okay, uh, can I? Okay, okay, so here are our two competing narratives on this. Okay, ready? Yeah. So, tell me if I'm missing anything. So, your summary is that in Washington there existed competent and informed Palestinian delegates that were attempting to to negotiate with Israel a more just resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian uh, struggle, I guess, or the disagreement on everything. They were pushing for the things that solution, more, pretty much, maybe. For, for I don't know. I don't know if that's true. But they were at the very least they were trying to negotiate for something that would have been better for Palestinians. But you're saying Israel opted instead to negotiate at Oslo with Arafat because they could take advantage of his political weakness um, and negotiate something that wouldn't be as favorable to the Palestinians and would be more favorable to Israel. And so then the idea goes that if Israel was truly looking for a lasting peace, they would have negotiated instead with the um, with the delegates in Washington rather than those at Oslo. Yeah. Yeah, that's I think that's a good summary of, of my. OK, take. so here's the counter narrative. OK, so I would ask, 
what obligation does Israel have to negotiate with any particular group of delegates, especially those in Washington that aren't even the elected or mm-hmm. heads of the PLO, right, they aren't, number one. Number two, why is it Israel's responsibility to be the caretaker of Palestine in these negotiations? They're literally both debating either side. Israel is supposed to be looking out for Israel's interests. The Palestinians are supposed to be looking out for Palestinians' interests, number two. And then number- I agree. Sure. And then number three, um, if these negotiations were so unpopular and so unsuccessful, did Arafat suffer uh, losses in popularity or issues relating to him being the lead of the PLO from 93 and onwards? Or is the blowback for Arafat if this was so unpopular? Because here's the problem. If my narrative is true, and my, so my narrative is this, okay? My narrative is that Palestinians are okay fighting essentially forever. If they are gonna cut a deal with Israel, they want everything, including infinite right of return. And um, you know, if if they don't get everything they want, then they're okay just like basically continuing the fight, okay? Uh, Your narrative is that Israel is taking advantage of the situation. Uh, They're kind of fucking the Palestinians over by engaging in these negotiations, kind of behind the back of like the more informed delegates. And they're making negotiations that aren't in the interest of the Palestinian people, right? So if these collections, so these are the two different narratives. Well, if we look at what happens after Oslo, which narrative is supported? So one, Rabin is executed, he's assassinated by a far right Zionist who thinks that he went too far with the Palestinians. That's one thing, okay, well, interesting. Two, Arafat maintains his leadership and enjoys decent support, even after supporting Saddam Hussein in 91. He he still seems to enjoy pretty widespread support for the Palestinian people after the Oslo Accords. He has no problem cheering for and leading the second intifada. He's still nominated to be the representation at the Camp David Accords, uh, even though apparently in 93, he fucked them all over in the Oslo Accords, and, and, and in 93, mm-hmm. right? And two, so I, I don't see, can you give me, what are the facts that support the narrative that you're giving me? Other than, I see there are some diplomats that are saying, well, we felt this was underhanded, blah, blah, blah. What are the facts after the Oslo Accords that would support your narrative? Well, let's talk about Oslo first. Uh, okay. Madrid Conference is the one that, it, it is the conference that actually set up these negotiations. That's where they agreed to have negotiations between Palestinians and the Israelis. Sure, right? that was and one of the, a lot them. of things happened at the Madrid Conference, but that was one of them, right? Yeah. That was one, yeah, they had, they were having discussions with the Jordanians as well, but we're talking about Palestinians, mm-hmm. representatives from the Palestinians that were actually living there in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip that went. Um, obviously, they were trying to have some sort of unity government. At the time, it wasn't very easy because, again, we're, we're like talking about Palestinians that were living in Lebanon, Jordan, Tunisia, all over the world, and then those living uh, within the actual um areas so i believe that those were like official negotiations that should have happened now well, hold on wait wait, wait. you uh, believe that what was the, official negotiations the, those were the official negotiation those were the official negotiations between palestinians and israelis for a two-state solution the oslo opinion. no no, no, no. At, in in washington after madrid i think the negotiations that were happening well, okay hold on wait a minute that but that's your opinion I mean, no, no, no. What, what, do you, what do you mean? That's what Shlomo Ben Yadmin said. That there was official official delegations in, and if you go to the Madrid Conference wiki page, it says that after Madrid, the the official talks began in in Washington in 1992 or 91, I believe. Okay. So if you, but but yeah, but, okay. but 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 Arafat is the that? leader of the yes. Arafat is the Wait, leader of the. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to okay. Arafat. Okay. I haven't gotten to it. Arafat was banished from from going to Madrid because. Israel didn't want him there. They didn't want to negotiate with him. And the way, the, so the PLO was created, I believe, and you can correct me on this, I'm, I, I may be wrong, but it was created by something called the PNC. The PNC had different parties, and they're the ones that created the PLO, and they appointed Arafat as the head of the PLO. He wasn't like the negotiator. So in Oslo, what had happened is he had somebody named Abu Alat that was taught, that went to Oslo. He was like the one guy from the Palestinian side who wasn't one of the negotiating team talking with, I believe, Perez, the foreign minister for Israel at the time, and they started seeing, okay, we're going to get a, a more favorable deal. The Israelis looked at the the, the local Palestinian um, uh, like delegation as more pragmatic and reasonable, opposed to Arafat, who's been being like, who was like carrying out all these super violent attacks from Lebanon and all these other areas, right? They're like, we're not negotiating with that guy. And so once they they saw that, okay, the Palestinian delegation in Washington, the one that we've been dis- discussing with for over a year, are like super hard on their like, ha- have like hard lines, according to Shlomo Ben-Yami, were asking for all of the right things. 
Hold on, wait, 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 careful. When you say hard lines and asking for all of the right things. That's not what I'm saying. That's what we saw. Sure, sure, but I heard you, you, for instance, I heard you, because this has always been a sticking point that I hear people say, like, yeah. and it's a very sneaky one. People are like, oh, they wanted peace. But like the number one bullet point on us, that includes an infinite right of return for 6 million Palestinian refugees into the state of Israel. So I don't know what those hard lines were, but if it's if the start was something like that, then I can understand, but like, okay, yeah, we're not no, negotiating no, with these guys, because it's a non-starter, right? I, I okay, so I don't think I don't know. So the, the delegate, the conversations at, at Washington, we don't have like full insight. I'm taking my information specifically from what the foreign minute, the Israeli foreign minister said, and he, what he said is they were asking all the right questions about right of refugees. I don't know if that means return of six million. I don't have that information or a just solution. Uh, obviously, we've seen like we, we've seen. Okay, that but like hold on, because your time. entire argument kind of hinges on some of these facts. Because if no, they it were, doesn't. it absolutely does. Because if their delegation was like, "Listen, can we just get like a few people in, or can we have like a fund set up, or whatever?" Right? And Israel's like not even hearing that. Well, that's pretty shitty of Israel to not even engage with that, or or try to roll those conversations into. Um, or wait, you said these happen after Madrid um, to not roll these conversations into Oslo. But if their negotiations were like, "Listen, okay, sixty-seven borders and full right of return." That's the start. Now let's move from there. I can understand you're like, no, f that. We're not negotiating with you. We're gonna go negotiate your actual leader. Like, I, so it, the, I think the facts of that negotiation are pretty, are really important. Yeah, uh, they're really important. But I don't think any of those negotiations would be outside of what either two four two or I want to say one nine four. Two four two and one nine four are pieces of paper that we can wipe our ass with. That has nothing to do with the actual Destiny, conversation. You can, look, you can you can, you can say that all you want. But in 1988, when when uh, whatever they decla Palestinians declared their independence and they acknowledged Israel as a state, right? That's when it first happened, and that's when they first. And you know, before that, I agree they rejected the 242. They were trying to like take all of uh, historic Palestine. I agree, right? And then there was a shift for a two-state solution based off of the 67 borders. Now, in what I'm 88, is, after two failed wars. <laughs> They wanted to go back to the pre Destiny, two wars ago borders. Uh, De De Destiny, this is cope. Okay. No, no, I'll hold on. Cope. Okay, tell no, me. No, you're go coping. Ahead. Tell me. You, you're go ahead. coping. Okay. 1940. Why did the 1948 war happen? As you keep saying, like these these wars. Why did the 1948 war? You said yourself that pre 1948, mm -hmm. the Arabs' resistance of the Zionists uh, coming in was just okay. Sure. 1948. So that's why the war. So so you can't. You can't narrativize these wars as, oh, look at these like Arabs are just trying to kill all Jews or trying to like, no, they were resisting to- an Hold on, stop, stop, hold on. I can, okay, we can narrativize it, that's fine, but don't romanticize it. They were resisting, they no. wanted to kill the people that went there, right? It's fine to say that, they have justification for it, but don't don't romanticize this shit, okay? The noble savage myth is just as disgusting as like the, uh, Wait, it's just as disgusting on, as like the, uh, the, the opposite of it or whatever, or like the savage savage myth or whatever, right? Like the idea that they were just like a bunch of peace loving, uh, you know, glasses well, wearing, highly educated, anime watching, manga reading, that's not true. There was a ton of violence back and forth, between Arabs resistance? and Jews. It wasn't just it resistance. It was massacres. It was killing civilians. Definitely. It was pogroms. It wasn't just uh, resistance against the invader. It was a ton of shit back and forth before 48, between both sides, okay. to be clear. Again, again, resistance doesn't mean fucking handing out flowers, okay? Resistance also means violent and sometimes like out of the law. That's fine. I understand. That are disgusting. My, I, understand. So I, resistance, I understand. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Everything else. I understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. For me personally, there's a new boundary that I have in a conversation. I don't want somebody that I'm talking to to say resistance instead of violence unless you've actually killed somebody before. Sure. Okay. Violent so resistance. So say violence. Thank you. Right? Yes. Okay. Because resistance okay. is the most whitewashed, cringe, cum infested, fucking, like, dumbed down word of ever. It's so euphemistic. It is disgusting. But go ahead. Sure. Okay. So violent resistance happened, and we agreed that those violent resistance were just. Sure. Right? If it yeah. happened anywhere else in the world, people are going to resist sometimes violently. Sure. I, will I can think there's just cause on the on the uh, on the Jewish side as well, though. I can I can I see their justifications as well, though. I don't think they're wholly without justification. Okay. Um, do you think, in the Palestinian perspective, their justification, like, 
I'm assuming by justification you're going to say that like all the shit that happened around Europe and like, I would say all the shit that happened Europe from in the past 2000 years I would say all the stuff that was going on in the Russian Empire pre 1900s I would say the stuff that was going on around Europe I would say that the promises and the commitments that the Jews made in order to secure the Balfour Declaration um, and then I would say Fair. that their so purchasing we, of we, land in, in historic Palestine Syria Palestina or whatever the fuck like they bought the land they moved there they worked the land and blah 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 and then the Holocaust happened like okay well we really need to move here I can see their justifications well, too sure yeah I have a question. If the same thing happened in a different region of the world, like, I don't know, you've been learning countries. Uh, I don't know. What is a country? Nigeria, right? Would the Jews had equal just cause or was it more just because 3000 years ago they ruled that area? Um, I don't know if I would base would it, would any it of it on the, equally, I think it would have been equally. Yeah, I don't base equally. anything on historic claims to the land. Okay. Though. Sure. So if your argument is it, it wasn't like Palestine specifically, they would have had a just cause to go in and try to create a nation state on any part of the land in the world. OK, you think that was just cause. That's fine. I'm not going to argue with you on that. My my uh, like we can disagree. OK, okay. Um, but I, I do think there was just cause to want a Jewish state. I think that's pretty common sense. Uh, I, I struggled accepting that for a while. Uh, I think there was just cause. OK based on history so pre-1940 so 1948 war there was just cause now when we're looking at 67 what happened between 1948 and 67 right the arabs just lost a monumental defeat they had their land in their minds right taken and they were defeated miserably okay and then from 48 to 67 uh quote unquote jordan occupied west bank egypt occupied gaza hold on wait wait, wait 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 hold on wait to be clear no Jordan did not occupy the West Bank. There was no West Bank to occupy. They conquered that land, and then Egypt conquered the Gaza Strip. There was nothing there to occupy. This, this was to their territory. Did, did, yeah. Wait, did Jordan? So okay, so you're saying Jordan made the West Bank a part of sovereign Jordan? Yes. Okay, I, I haven't seen that on the map, but maybe you're right. Uh, I've never seen a map of Jordan with the West Bank any time between '48 and. Uh, uh, I just thought it was just armistice line, and the plan was eventually to defeat Israel. Okay, that's that's what that's how I looked at it. Hold on, wait. I'm and, sorry. Wait a second. In 1948, when Israel declares its independence, where are they drawing their borders around? I don't think Israel ever draw their borders. How can you have a, how you did. declare yourself a country? That's a good question. I think for the longest time, actually, Israel never announced where their borders were. If you can find anywhere for me, even up until today, where Israel announced its official borders, I, I I'm happy to concede. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk through this and then we'll look for it because I could be wrong. But my understanding is Israel declared independence in 1948 after the independence was declared and the other Arab states wanted to go to war to try to like push them out because they felt like they shouldn't be there. A whole bunch of fighting happened and Israel roughly tried to conquer the same land that would have been in the 47 partition plan. And in areas where they saw they could take more land, they pushed for more land. Um, and then afterwards, that fighting stopped. And then um, those were the... I don't remember if those were... Those must have been. So, are you saying the armistice? Are you saying the armistice lines with the official is, uh, borders of Israel? I believe Israel declared it as such. I believe so. Okay, I, I don't think so. But if you have evidence of that, I will. I will concede and say, okay, you're right. They did declare it as such. What were Israel's? Because my understanding is their borders would have been declared. Because that was one of the criticisms. One of the very first criticisms of Israel's military action in 1948 was when they had originally declared independence. It was based on the 48 or 47 partition plan. But then people were like, well, hold on, motherfuckers. You guys have actually conquered even past some of those 47 partition plan borderlines. So fuck you. <laughs> um, so I mean, I don't know if the obviously, well, the other Arab surrounding states didn't refer to that as um, as Israel because they didn't recognize them. But I'm pretty Pretty sure that would have been what Israel had originally wanted as its uh, borders. Um, so, as far as my understanding, Israel has never announced their official borders. It's always been seen as disputed territory, et cetera, et cetera. And if uh, we even, let, let's say you find something where Israel announces its borders, which I don't think you will, I don't think you'll find that anywhere. Okay. But let's say you do. Uh, that would have only lasted from 49 to 67. And then post 67, would you agree that? Israel has never declared where their borders are, because that's that's for sure. After 67 and the occupation began of the West Bank, Israel has never said where their borders are. Well, what, what, what they must have come to a border agreement in 79 with Egypt, right? They must have come to a border agreement with Jordan in 93 oh, right? okay. or 94. Okay, okay. 
but, but not all of their borders. They never announced, these are our borders. The country of Israel, every other country has borders, right? Israel Maybe, I, that might said, be the case. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not sure borders. 100%, yeah. Um, let's check. Israel, yeah. um, Israel, independence. Declaration. I think they make reference to the partition plan, but maybe we can say that this wasn't them. Seriously? Oh, the Mossad killed my connection. Thanks. Um, uh, control F borders. Final wording borders. Okay, the borders were not specified in the declaration, although its 14th paragraph indicated a willingness to cooperate in the implementation of the own partition plan. The original draft declared that the borders would be decided by the own partition plan. While this was supported by Rosen and Bekor Shalom Sheet Treat, uh, Shitrit. It was opposed by Ben-Gurion and Zisling, with Ben-Gurion stating, we accepted the UN resolution, but the Arabs did not. They're preparing to make war on us if we defeat them and capture Western Galilee or territory on both sides of the road of Jerusalem. Those areas become part of the state. Why should we obligate ourselves to accept boundaries that in any case the Arabs don't accept? The inclusion of the designation of borders in the text was dropped after the provisional government of Israel. The Minhilat Ham voted 5-4 against. The revision is committed to a Jewish stand on both sides of the Jordan River. That is including Transjordan. One of the phrase within its historic borders included borders. Okay, so maybe actual borders weren't declared here. Um, that could be the case. That doesn't change my earlier statement, though, that when Jordan uh, invaded into this area, it did annex the West Bank, and that was part of Jordan, as same as the Gaza Strip was part of Egypt. These weren't occupied territories. They just became part of those countries because Palestine didn't exist, and it wasn't a country, and nobody thought of it until, like, the 80s as being that way. But if you can find something contradicting that, that'd be f di fine. But, like, Wait, yeah. do you, do, you don't think that the Palestinians... I think from, the, like, the 1920s to 1948 didn't want a country? No, they didn't. Country? No. Okay, um, and do you can you share with me like any source where Jordan announces their new borders as including the West Bank as like part of their sovereign territory? I, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure um, it's called the annexation of the West Bank. Like when Egypt and Jordan, when all the Arab states went to war with Israel, they just tried to fight against them and take the land that they could. Jordan, I don't even think, I could be wrong, It's because this was the first war, obviously the first Arab Israeli war. I don't even think Jordan fought against Israel when they invaded the West Bank. I think they basically just like captured the West Bank. It was Bank very mild, yeah. And then yeah, chilled, was, they didn't I, even push it. So they were literally just conquering territory. Egypt and Israel fought, but they conquered the Gaza Strip and then they chilled um, and that was it. But yeah, it wasn't like they were here to like say, I'm, and then afterwards I, um, I think for Jordan, because this is why, I mean, from something on Twitter today for saying, why are you confusing Palestinians and Jordanians? I'm pretty sure like 60 or 70% of Jordanian people are like Palestinians. Because once Jordan annexed yeah, the West Bank, they all those people no, they became are. Palestinians. Yeah, that's where all of those Palestinians in Jordan come from, was the annexation of the West Bank. No, no, no. And then, or, or a lot so, of them came from there. And, and then the Nakba as well, like moving people out, right? But Yeah, yeah. so 48, the Nakba was was where, I, I, so Jordan stopped taking Palestinian citizens, uh, Palestinians to like giving them citizenship at some point. I want to say it was 67 where they stopped giving them citizenship completely. Um, like, so today, if somebody gets expelled and goes to Jordan, like they can't get a citizenship. Uh, it has to be like prior to 67, like during the 48 war up until 67. Um, so again, yeah. So my point is Israel has never declared their borders, but it, like, I don't think it's a big deal to say like whether or not Jordan annexed or whether or not whatever happened. I think the... Um, I think the PNC was for the Palestinian sort of quote unquote delegation that wanted all of historical Palestine was established in 48. Am I wrong? Well, hold on. Like after the war. I, I think that this is, I think this is a very important because I think there's a lot of weird historical revisionism that goes on that. Wait, what is important exactly? On when Which we part? say, here's what is truly happening. When we say the occupied territories, a trick has been played in the past few decades where Israel is occupying territories formerly belonging to the state of Palestine. That's the that's what's get the impression that's given off. In reality, the occupied territories are Israel occupying territory that formerly belonged to the nation of Egypt and occupied territory that formerly belonged to the nation of Jordan. That's what okay. that's so let's so we're starting there, number one. Okay. Number two, there was no Palestinian state by which Israel occupied the territory from. Number three, Jordan and Egypt have renounced their desire to have any of that land. Okay. Number three, um did they renounce their desire or did they did they hand it over to the PLO and said the PLO like we like, we're handing it over to the PLO? Like No no, they, they just they they talk like when Jordan hold on. When Jordan initially 
annexed the, the it, so at the, okay, I didn't read much on this, okay. On the I'm Jericho conference. I'm yeah. curious. Okay, not, on the Jericho because... conference, there were four resolutions that were adopted, okay. Palestine Arabs desire unity between Transjordan and Arab Palestine and therefore make known their wish that Arab Palestine be annexed immediately to Transjordan. They also recognize okay. Abdullah as their king and request him proclaim himself king of new territory. Pa two, Palestine Arabs express gratitude to Arab states for their efforts in behalf of liberation of Palestine. The delegates, the delegates indicated that the object of this was to hint that the Arab states was to hint to the Arab states that their job was done. I don't know what that quote at the end there is. Um, and then three is expression of thanks to Arab states for their generous assistance and support of the Palestine Arab refugees. And four is resolved that purport of first resolution to be conveyed to King of But yeah, the, it was, yeah, that the occupation of the West Bank was Israel conquering territory from Jordan. There was no Palestine. There, there was uh, no Palestinian they, state they, that was occupied. Say, yeah. Go ahead. When they say Arab, Arab Palestine, Arab, like, Palestine, like what, what, what are they referring to there? Just the group of Arab people that was living in that area? Sure. I guess like pre-48 pre then, right? Sure. That have been living there. Okay. Uh, you, said that the, you said that the land that Jordan just said, oh, we don't want the land anymore. I, I believe that Jordan actually gave the land and said, this, is, this belongs to the Palestinians after 67 war. Okay, I, I don't. I that, don't think, that's like I mean, that's like that's like when wrong. a that's like when a wrong, that's like when I'm a guy stuck. cheats on a girl and then the girl's like, I didn't even like that guy ever. <laughs> that, sure, yeah, no, they might I have mean, said it after Syria, that territory was conquered in war. Okay, so one after the territory was conquered from them in the Six Hundred War, and then two after the PLO tried to coup their fucking king. Okay, yeah, they're like, you know what? We actually don't want the West Bank. Fuck it. Like, sure, but it's not like they gave it because they were bullied so much by Israel. It probably just wasn't worth the effort or the shit or the time or anything else. Wait, wait. Right. Well, hold on, hold on. Right when two four two passed in sixty seven, uh, I think it, it, within two four two it says it's inadmissible to acquire. Um, land through war right so it kind i don't of care i don't i wipe my ass with 242 you can't acquire territory by war they're mad that in 67 israel took the west who's bank mad? who's wait who's mad anybody the entire world is mad anybody can be mad <laughs> like dude it's not you hold on just, let me like, i need you okay hold on i need you to acknowledge that this is what you're saying you're saying in resolution 242 people were really huh. mad that israel took through war territory that jordan had 20 years earlier taken through war do you agree with that statement? Otherwise, we can talk about that for the next four hours. Do I agree with the statement that- Do you agree with the statement that the that world that. said, Israel, it was bad for you to take through war in 1967, what Jordan had taken through war in 1948. That's what essentially what we're saying. Okay, so, so according to you, right? Uh, no, 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 not according to me. We're just dealing with the facts. State. Am I wrong factually no, anything? Said, who, who did Jordan take the, take the West Bank from? That's a complicated you question. Took, you, you just said that they took it through war. Who did they take it from? If you're saying that there's no Palestinian state, it depends who on. Did they take it from. It it depends on who you ask. So it sounds like they didn't acquire it through war because no one owned it, right? And then once Jordan, and according to you, annexed it and made it theirs, Israel did acquire it through war, right? Now the it's, it's the logic. so after the mandatory period expires on a particular territory the way that all of the mandates through um the way that all of the mandates hold on one second uh, the way that all the mandates work are this territory is going to be administered by France or Great Britain or blah 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 until you guys have basically figured your shit out and then we're going to hand it over to you. Mm -hmm. That's how all of the mandates worked throughout the Middle East, okay? Now in okay. mandatory Palestine it's hard to say, well, who had that? Technically, the real answer is the only state that emerged from that was technically Israel. And all of the no, land actually the West, belonged. We're, we're talking about the West Bank specifically. The right West now, Bank was right? part of mandatory Palestine. Technically, Israel okay. was the only state that emerged from that was mandatory period. So technically, Israel really <laughs> owns all of the land. Hold on. You can laugh. I'm sorry. In 1948, where did Palestine declare independence? Where did that state emerge from? Show me. And I'll, I'll wait. I'm not, I'm not saying it did. I'm not saying it did. Okay, so, so then in Mandatory Palestine, can you tell me in 1948, uh -huh. what state emerged from Mandatory Palestine? Uh, within the pre-67 borders, the state of Israel. Okay, so who else then gets the land? Who else inherits it? Uh, I guess whoever fights and gets it. Correct. Because it's, it's not a country yet, right? It's not a state. 
Well, but so, there were borders there where the, the, it was the mandatory part that was supposed to go to a state afterwards, but there was a conflict within that obviously it wasn't settled. Your Destiny, your argument falls apart, and I'll tell you why. Because you can't have it one way and not the other. If Palestine wasn't the state, Jordan didn't acquire it or, or conquer it from anybody. So the 242 doesn't apply to Jordan because they didn't take land from another country. Whereas if it became, a, according to you, it became a part of Jordan, Israel did take it from another country. Just because there wasn't a state there yet, there was the mandatory <laughs> that's, thing that's drawn your around whole it. Argument. Okay, fine. Okay, your, then you, hold on. Never mind. I agree 100%. In that case, Israel is 100% within their right for all the territory that they own because they've conquered it. And you completely and totally, you rescind any right to any of the land that Israel has because they conquered it because there was no state there as well then. And then we just agree then? Do we agree 100% no, then? You, no, no, but you said the state was Jordan. You said the West Bank belonged to Jordan. Because Jordan conquered it. They, but that means that Israel gets for, to keep everything they, they have because they conquered it, it too. They, what do you mean they, they didn't conquer, conquer it from? Who did they conquer it from? What do you mean? They because, invaded and they annexed it to their country. From who? I, I, from the Who people living there? It? it was just land. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what the point I'm trying to make. And I'm not trying to, like, uh, muddy the waters, right? I'm just saying, if you think, or, uh, and I'm not saying I agree with your take, but if you say that West Bay, or the Palestine wasn't a state, right? It was met, there was meant to be two states. There was an armistice line. And according to you, Jordan had conquered and taking that land but there was no state to take it from and then in the 67 war you're saying that israel had acquired that land that belonged to jordan which according to 242 you can't take land from another country that's that's the train of thought that you've given me okay now, if number state, one now, okay I'll, hold on wait, wait number one you keep saying this if palestine wasn't a state can you you can admit to me there was no palestinian state can, oh, can we agree on that? Because we need to, we're like having super fundamental disagreements on a lot of these facts here. Do you acknowledge that Palestine wasn't a state? Or we can start there if we need to, and then we can walk through each well, of these let's, points. Let's, let's, can we, sorry, and I don't need to be a stickler, but can we define, like, what do you mean by state? As so in a, a, a collection of people that had a governing body, that had established borders, that had, yeah, any of that, that, that had like an, a clear, under a clear national, ethno national identity, like any oh, of these I things. Clear. Okay, so you said established borders, ethno identity, self governing body. Mm -hmm. Are those are the three criteria to become a, or a, any of these LCD things. Body. Any of any of these things. Like yeah, t talk to me. Where where is yeah? So uh, I don't. I think the land, even when it was under Ottoman, uh, Ottoman rule, was was a region, uh, not a country, not a state known as Palestine. That's that's my take. Do you disagree with that? Yes. Show me an Ottoman map that shows the okay. same borders of Palestine, historic Palestine? No, 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 it won't be the same borders. It won't be the same Okay, borders. so then that argument is done. That falls apart. So what's the next thing? Wait, well, so, uh, no, no, I'm saying that there was a region called Palestine. Did no, I don't believe there was a region called, had... I think Palestine, it was like Palestina, Syria or whatever. It was all rolled into that giant, like, or mm -hmm. greater Syria or whatever. It's been called different things. But no, there was not that little chunk of land called Palestine where all the Palestinians lived. It was a group of like tenant farmers and villagers that were spread throughout okay, the region. Put, That's it. Okay, it, 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 okay. According to your logic, was there never an Egyptian state under Ottoman rule? Was there never an Iraqi state? Was there never a Syrian state, a Lebanese? Because if that's your argument, then I would agree with you because the borders were drawn by the British, right? The border borders were just kind of like arbitrary. So I would agree with you on that. But if we say that before something officially becomes a country and state, was it actually anything? No, no, then... hold on, hold on, okay. I can't argue for every single region, okay? But I'm definitely not deferring to you on any of this here so we can look this up. For some of these, you can make strong arguments and for others, you can't. So for instance, okay, I p very peripherally know the arguments here, okay? My understanding is that like around places like Iraq and Syria, the borders were kind of sort of somewhat arbitrary. But when you go to places like Turkey or Egypt, I believe that these people had a much stronger identity for these regions. And that's why Turkey went to war to like establish their borders. That's why Egypt had like later on such a huge nationalistic and military identity. Um, so for some of these places, no, they didn't really have like a strong identity and the borders just kind of like whatever. And then the people were kind of uh, whatever. But for some of these places, they oh. did have a very strong identity of a collection mm -hmm. of people living there. None of those things apply to the Palestinian how people. Do you, how, do you, how do you measure strong identity? 
Is we can measure it a ton of ways. For the land? Yeah, it could be a ton of ways. It could be um, who's willing to fight for the land. It could be like a okay. collection of like representatives or governments. It could be uh, okay. shared language or culture. Um, it could be like large sprawling uh -huh. cities that are connected to one another. It could be shared royal families like in the Gulf states. It could be a uh, mm -hmm. common military. Like, yeah, all of these things oh. are things we look for. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so the royal family one, right? So, um, so all of the sons, I, I forgot his name. He was like the leader of the, the Arabs when they revolted against the Turks. All of his sons became the leaders of each one of those countries. So it was all kind of one homogenous group, right? Like Iraq became, was one of his sons. Uh, I can give you the exact names. Hold on, wait, are you telling me that of... every royal family in the Middle East all descend from one common person? Is that true? No, no, no. I, I think some countries did, though. I think there was one. Uh, okay, my understanding family. is there's like a distinct difference between like the Hashemites and then like the uh, like the Saudi Arabian royal family, the Qatari royal family, the UAE. I thought these were quite distinct. I could be wrong on that. I just feel like I've no, no. The, the, the Gulf, the Gulf states are like a com uh, completely separate. I, I agree, but I think uh, let me let me find his exact name if you're interested. His name is Hussein bin Ali, and his sons became. Um, wait, sorry, no, his dad. Let me look for his dad. Uh, does this matter to you? Or is this kind of, we're getting into like, I don't think this matters. Okay. Well, here, anyway, the, the only so, argument that I'm making is, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if we take a step back and we eject all the political garbage today that exists, it's very obvious when you look at the uh, 1948 Arab-Israeli war, Palestinians did not have a strong identity. They didn't. They didn't have like a okay, coherent identity. Okay. Israeli that's like, so, if, that's if painfully prove, obvious. If you can prove to me that Egyptians had a strong identity and Palestinians didn't based off of this specific criteria or Jordanians had a strong identity or the Syrians had a strong identity and Palestinians didn't, then I would concede. And be like, okay, I guess there was no strong identity. Uh, and if you're making that argument, then we have to agree that there was no Egyptian state, there was no Syrian state. I just no don't Jordanian understand state. how you 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 want to compare. Just to be clear, before I waste my time reading this, because even on my limited understanding of history, I know how painfully wrong you are. You're going to tell me that ties historic understandings of the people of Egypt is on the same level as the smattering of farmers that were in Greater Syria. You're, you're going to tell me that? You, you really want to play that game. So when we go and look up the history of Egypt, the leadership there, the, the establishment of that country, even as they existed under the Ottoman Empire, you're going to tell me that the group of people that existed in Egypt, they had the same nationalistic, independent, collective feelings as the as the tenant farmers that were dying of malaria sprawled across historic Palestine? If that's the argument to make, that's I fine. We start reading. But I need you to commit to something before I read, because every time you make a statement and I look it up, it's like, clearly it's not true. And then when we start I'm to look just, it up, then things shift a lot. So I want, to, I want a really I'm strong statement from you here on this before we start reading. Yeah. Destiny. I'm just trying to follow your logic, right? I claim that there was a region called Palestine under Ottoman rule. You're saying that the borders are different. And I agree with you. They are different, right? Uh, uh, so were the borders of all of these other countries around them. Like, do you disagree with that? Yeah, all of them are slightly different, sure. Okay, but that doesn't mean they weren't, they had nothing, right? They're, oh, that completely, because when I said that, you said, okay, well, then that throws away your entire argument. Then there wasn't a Palestinian state, there wasn't a this, there wasn't a that. No, no. And I will admit, okay. I, I don't think there was a Palestinian state. I don't think there was a Palestinian country. I don't think there was a Palestinian, like, whatever you want to call it. I think there was a just a region, a collection of people in different cities uh, from uh, whatever that identified themselves more so after 19, or after the British mandate started as Palestinians or a Palestine Palestinian state and wanted some level of independence. I'm not saying that Egypt's history was much deeper than the Palestinians. I would concede that point. Here, this is my different. Okay, hold on. We we have to. Okay, we have to agree here, or we or we're gonna go both do research and then come back because we don't agree on this point. This conversation is a waste of time. Okay, Egypt and Egyptians had a strong national identity even Agreed. prior Stronger to than the, the Palestinians. Yeah. 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 Okay. Before. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Palestinians yeah, didn't at all. Not well, I wouldn't say didn't at all, but definitely not as strong as the Egyptians. None. The it was a collection of villagers and tenant farmers. They, most of them didn't even own the land they were on. They were just there. They were random people. They worked the farm. They tended to be Arab. They tended to speak a certain language. Some cultures might have developed in the region, but there was no unifying national identity of anything relating to these people. Uh, I I kind of agree and kind of don't. So I kind of I, so the the. What I would disagree with was, I do believe that there was like uh, an identifiable culture. Was it through all of 
British Mandate in Palestine? Probably not, right? Because again, those borders are kind of arbitrary. I would say there was some region within that 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 state where people did identify with a similar culture and food, and uh, maybe they didn't have aspirations to become a state until the British Mandate of Palestine. That could very well be the case, right? Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, I I, I, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I don't know where are you. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. Hold on, because I feel like we're, the goalposts have been running around so much in this conversation. Okay, so then we don't have any disagreements at all. The Palestinian people were not a nation of people. They weren't a nation prior to the uh, British Mandate. There was no. There wasn't even a desire for a nation for Palestine, which is evidenced by the fact that in '48, when their shit gets conquered by everybody, they're not even asking for a state. The only drive is to kick the Israelis out. So then we totally agree on anything. So I don't even know where we're arguing about any of this. You agree with me on every single point here that I made initially, but for some every reason point we except for uh, I think and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in '48 after the war there was like something like some Palestinian legislation legislative council that was formed to say we want a state on all of this like we want to take back this state on all of historical Palestine this belong to nah, us and no there was you had the uh, the what the Jericho conference I think for uh, Jordan which annexed the West Bank and then Egypt I think for like two years Egypt made like a little Palestinian government in Gaza and then in like uh, and then like in two years they brought him into Cairo and then they dissolved it and like nobody gave a fuck that was it so no there was not this strong national the only time Palestinian identity has ever existed. Palestinian identity has been fabricated by surrounding Arab states to fight with Israel. That's the only reason why it's existed for so long. And it's because it's been used by them as a vector against Israel. That's why, as they've all signed peace treaties, they've stopped supporting them, and now we've dissolved into some world where it's like, well, fuck, who are the Palestinians? What do they want? Who's supporting them? Oh, just terrorists. That's why we're where we're at today. I, I don't think it's fair to make these conclusions with like 100% confidence without knowing or understanding the history from the Arab side, right? Like, in in the fucking 1800s, were they calling any people in that land? Like, hold on, so yes, yes. The, the, like, the Kedivarid like, of Egypt was literally like its own autonomous region under the Ottoman Empire. Yes, Turkey, the, those people had such a strong feeling about where their borders were that they like did a yeah, fucking revolution no, and they fought a war, they yeah. genocided Armenians. They were like, fuck you, we're killing all of you, get out of this our land. Yeah, yes, there were people. Hold on, no, no, wait, stop, stop, stop. Turkey. Yes, because the, because what I'm showing- Syria? What about Lebanon? What no, about I don't think, no, Iraq? I don't think like places like Syria or Iraq or I'm not sure about Lebanon. No, these places didn't have strong identities. That's why when the borders were drawn, the, basically it was just like, my understanding is the British were like, listen, here's the borders. You guys can like kind of run the shit. And if you do well, then fuck it, you're good. And that's it. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So you're just saying there was just a bunch of Arabs that were living there for a very long time. They, they weren't super different than each other, except for maybe like Egypt and like well, you know, whatever. That's what you're saying, right? There wasn't like a like a desire. Like I don't. I, I would be surprised. I've never seen evidence. I would be surprised if there was a significant difference between the uh, Arabs living in Iraq and the Arabs living in Syria. I don't think there was. But basically, it was split up. Here are the borders. You guys make good with each other, and then eventually you get a country. But I don't think it was like oh, when they when those borders were decided, Iraqi Arabs had such a strong culture that was completely separate and different from sure. Syrian Arabs. I don't believe that was okay. the case. Yes. So so so, uh, so I'm not going to argue with that on that. If I'm going to argue with it on that, I'm going to provide you resources. Okay. Okay. So. But do, do you believe at least, like, I know we got caught up in, like, the identity stuff, but at least since 67, do you feel that Israel, I'm not saying they should have, by the way, I'm not saying you agree that they should, but do you believe that they never agreed to pull back to the 67 orders post-67 war? No, there's no way. I don't think Israel ever agreed. Yeah, no. Okay, I, I agree. Okay, so if they've never agreed, right, and we're at a point where we have, like, this this conflict that... that uh, Wait, but what? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We have to. We have to do all of these points matter. The, what are the okay. sixty-seven borders? There are. What do you mean when you say that? I mean pre sixty-seven borders. Yes. I mean what the, were the pre sixty-seven? The nineteen forty-nine armistice line is when I, what I what I mean at least. Okay. When those bilateral treaties were signed, all of the armistice agreements were signed, you realize that part of an armistice agreement is literally saying, by the way, these are not borders. That's like an explicit declaration in all of these armistices. <laughs> No, no, I agree. I agree. But if we were to look at, if we were to look at, and I'm going to send you, and I, I don't want to say you hate resolutions, but it is what it is on this, the, the peaceful settlement of the question of Palestine that gets voted on every year. And it's been voted on every year since basically the mid seventies. They said, okay, Palestine and Israel, y'all are not going to agree. So this is what world thinks that the solution is and should be based on Israel's uh, what, what is it called? Inadmissible conquering of land, right? Not my words. So don't, like, 
no. Hold it to me, but why has Israel, my question to you, never agreed with the terms set by 98% of the planet? Probably because the terms are stupid. According to who? Just Israel? According to the facts of the matter. The, the idea that, that you would hearken story. back to 67 borders that were armistice lines that only existed because other states failed to conquer so Israel. You, like, agreed, you agreed with me that the settlements were illegal last time we spoke. In right? 2004, so there was an advisor opinion that seemed to say as much. Sure. Okay, so... <laughs> you're very technical. Like hold on, that. wait, 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 I am so, technical. Hold on. You, okay, hold on. I just, I want, I have to no, point this out. No, 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 I understand. Wait, wait, no, no, I understand. Hold on, wait. I gotta point this out to my audience, okay? Because it just happened, and this is why I always hate these types of arguments, okay? When we argue about the legality or the illegality things, I think it's important to be precisely correct on these things because people, when they argue for these things, they just try to like bring the moral arguments out, or they're trying to make no, really strong. Right. No, no, right. hold on. Let me finish. 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 Okay? Because we can lay out all of these facts, and I just told you 52 reasons why Resolution 242 is fucking retarded, okay? If for no other reason, because part of Resolution 242 was a recognition of Israel's state, which none of the other surrounding Arab states I would have ever agreed to, and they did it for decades, okay? And I can put all these things out, and now you were just like, well, you agreed that it was illegal, right? Into the fort. Like, you were about to use that as an argument? I'm sorry, but at this point in, in the history of this region, everything's going on, that is a wholly unconvincing argument. Absolutely fucking not. No. I don't, I don't, the Perfect. fact that in 2004 there was an advisory opinion that it was illegal, that you were going to try to pull that out as some, like, authoritative argument on why these situations need to change is redonkulous. Sorry, okay. So do you, do you think Israel should just keep building settlements? Like, I'm curious, like, what is your opinion on it? Like, just personal opinion. Forget legality for a second. Like, do you feel like they should continue building settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem? No. Okay. Do you feel like they should dismantle the West Bank's or the settlements that they have built? I mean, I think it's the right thing to do. I think that the best thing that Israel should do for stability in the region is Israel needs to aggressively pursue a two-state peace plan with the Palestinians. Part of that is going to involve the dismantling of some settlements. Part of it is probably going to involve land swaps to maintain some other stupid settlements. Um, and then some two-state solution with contiguous Palestinian territory has to be established after that. But you're not going to find support for that in Israel right now. Yeah. You said, I agree with everything you just said. Like, we're in complete agreement on the solution. When you say land swaps to make to, to take into account the settlements that you know um, they don't want to dismantle, right? I think East Jerusalem has a lot of those. When you say land swaps, you're saying land swaps because of specific borders that you have in mind, right? Why would there even be need to be land swaps if Israel just? Why can't Israel just take those settlements and not give land swaps? Because Palestinians feel like they have some sort of attachment huh. to the initial 67 borders. And those are probably the huh. ones that like roughly you're going to be negotiating around. When you look at you Camp David, when you look at everything, when you talk about like 93 percent, 95 percent, 91 percent, what are you talking about percent of? You're talking about percent of the pre-67 borders. Huh. But why? Why are they why are they not wanting more than the 67 borders? Because they know they can't get why it. OK, so why do they feel like they can get the 67 borders? Because everybody is like attached that as an emotional point to their mind. Who is everybody? Like the world? Or just everybody. In everybody's UK, mind, that's like, like the anchor France. is like, yeah, like fucking that's it's the 67 borders. That's like our anchor okay. point. That's our starting point. So so it's not like the Palestinians are, are asking for they're asking for what the, the world has been spewing over and over again. Now, we agree on the solution, right? Some land swaps, dismantle some settlements, some contiguous, you know, Palestinian state that's not like chopped up into like pieces. Do you feel like Israel has made ever, any effort to do exact equal land swaps based on the settlements they keep in? Like, has that exact ever been proposed? like 100%? No, I th although I heard Even, as high as 95 or 97% maybe was Taba. No, 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 no. So Clinton parameters was 97%, but it was 97% of the West Bank, not including East Jerusalem. So if you look at it as a whole territory, it was more like 80 something percent. Now, Taba truly came very close. And I think the Palestinians should have just accepted it. I think Israelis should have accepted it. But again, whenever I go back to like the concession stuff, it's not like the Palestinians were ever asking for anything outside of what all of the security councils and general assemblies were, were calling for. They, they weren't asking anything for outside of that. And I don't think- Hold on, stop. And, when you say um, they weren't asking for anything outside of it, that's not true. A major calling card of a lot of the surrounding Arab states and the Palestinians have, has been related to right of return. That's been a huge okay, pain talk, point. Wait, let's talk about right of return. Let's okay. talk about right of return. Okay, so right of return. So why do the Palestinians feel like they're entitled to the right of the return? Because they want to do a one state solution so that they can genocide all the Jewish people that live in Israel. No, 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 that's, okay, That's that was like a, 
optimistic answer. Why do you think they actually want right of So that they can have a demographic the majority so that they can hold courts and trials for any Jewish person they want so that they can kill them and eventually expel, expunge most of them from the Middle East. Well, why do they think they have the right to it? Not by, why they want it. Why because today, right Palestinian to thought is dictated by radical Islam and Islamic Jihad. Wrong, wrong. Okay. Wrong, 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 wrong. wrong. Okay. Okay, so it's not, it's, it's very clear why they think they deserve it. Mm -hmm. It's because of Resolution 194, which is also reaffirmed consistently. What does Resolution 194 call for? A return of refugees. Now, me and you will agree that that's not a realistic solution at this point, right? We can both agree on that. Returning all the revolution uh, uh, refugees is not fit, like, it's not realistic, right? It'll destroy the state of Israel. But like, I would admit, admit that. I think it's like expecting can you, it fully is sure. ridiculous. Here, yeah, here's sorry. a question. Can you think of any other state, nation, country, any other situation ever in the history of the entirety of the world the where these same like yeah, demands okay. have been like made or asked of or? Um, I, I don't know of any other... Because these are like novel uses of the UN or like saying like, well, actually, well, what does right of return mean? Right of return means that you have to rewrite your borders and bring back the descendants, adopted children of refugees to come and live back in your territories and abolish and dissolve your borders. Like these yeah, arguments I mean, are being... Not... So even if he's like, well, oh, every single country in the world is voting for it. These are like novel utilizations of these like of the UN charter to make demands or requests of Israel that have never been made of any other country like in the entire history of the world. I mean, but you said it yourself, right? This this situation is novel in the sense that there's been an occupation for over five decades, right? I agree. It's I, I don't I, I don't know another region where that's happening. So it's really hard to like Well there the are I mean there are that, other countries that occupy most of it is like African shit, so I can't even speak to it. But like there are countries yeah. where but obviously none of these people care about international courts or whatever, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. No, like Destiny, this is where, in my mind, as a Palestinian, and I'm going to give you a very anecdotal, like, not based in, you know, any kind of study. The fact that my uncles and aunts that were born, right, in Haifa or Nazareth are not allowed to visit just seems wrong, okay? But f forget Hold on. That. Wait, 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 wait. Where, wait, wait. Where do they live now? In Jordan. Do they have Jordanian passports? They do. People with Jordan passports aren't allowed to go to Israel? Not everybody, no. I don't think I believe Dude, that, but I could be wrong. Oh, but. it's a one, no, 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 it's 100%. Dude, even people in the West Bank uh, need special permits to go to-, to Hold on, uh, those are two different Israel. things. Those are two different things. No, no, okay, things. forget the West Bank. Jordan, not every Jordanian is allowed to go to, to uh, Israel, 100%. I have cousins that have never been there. All of my cousins have never been there in their life. The only reason I've been able to go is because I have an American passport. Anyway, um, okay. Yeah, I just looked it up because I'm curious. Apparently, if you get a visa, you can go to Israel as a Jordanian citizen. So yeah, look look at how many of those visas uh, actually go through. <laughs> okay, let's see how. I don't even know. I can look this up. Let's see. Percentage of Jordanian visas approved. Is that information even published? I have no idea. I just know that like those people can't enter the country. All right, listen, if I have any Jordanian fans, okay, I'll fly you to fucking Tel Aviv and you can go visit these places and take pictures with this guy's uncle and I'm curious if they'd let you into the country or not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I, I mean, I can't. I, I, I can technically, but it's advised that I don't enter Israel from the Tel Aviv passport, uh, pa uh, airport, even though I'm an American citizen. Like, it calls that out. And if you look at the, the US Gov traveling, if you're a Palestinian American, you're going to experience blah, 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 blah. And it's an easier it's easier to just enter via the Sheikh Hussein Bridge, uh, like driving in instead of flying in. Like uh, Israel authorities have the right to ask for my email password, have the right to ask for my Instagram password, whatever, whatever, whatever. But anyway, um, kind of going back to the solution, you're saying that Palestinians want this right of return. I'm saying that that wasn't just a figment of their imagination. It's because of something existed that said it's theirs, but. Even since then, Palestinians, not once, not even yes, Arafat, I don't think, and I may be wrong, have ever asked, we want every single Palestinian back during the negotiations at uh, Camp David, 
during the negotiations at Taba, during the Clinton parameters, sure. during any negotiation in the past 25 years, because they're realistic. They know that no way Israel would accept this. Even if the world agrees, we know Israel won't accept it. And to me, the most important point is why the Taba summit failed. That's the closest they ever came. Uh, I think it was Fusi's cousin or uh, uncle that said, um, you know, we were six weeks out from a uh, Well, why do you think deal. the Taba summit failed? I think the Taba summit failed because they didn't have enough time. Like, they were very close, right? Both sides were saying we were almost there, but re-election happened, and the Israeli right won because of the Intifada. Yeah, like, the second, in, the, hold on, the Taba summit failed because of the second Intifada that was largely instigated by Arafat. I believe that second. Why did they stop negotiation, though? Who pulled out of the negotiations? Um, I don't believe anybody pulled out. I think no, they agreed Israel to release that. No, I think they agreed to make a mutual statement at the end that they were close. But then the leadership was changing because there was. I, I, they probably lost the support for it in Israel after the terrorist attacks that happened to the second intifada. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ehud Brock recalled his negotiators from Taba, right? Right when the elections were about to start. They were very close to to coming to an agreement. Since Taba, Taba was what? I think 2001? Yep. Uh, I don't think there's been, there's been one proposal. Hold on, no, no, wait, wait, Omer. explain that. When you say his government uh, terminated the talks, what is what are you implying no, there? I'm, I'm saying I'm saying his his because of upcoming elections. Okay. His government had withdrawn their negotiators to focus on their elections, and maybe if they won, continue. I would assume. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I don't know. But that, okay, do you think? Hold on. But do you think anything is bad there? Wait, fuck. Hold on. Someone's talking about it. One second. Okay. Sorry. Uh, do you think a mistake was, just, was made by Hood Barak there? Do you think he did something bad or wrong? No, no, no. I don't think it was necessarily like malicious. I think they just had elections. It was just like a matter of fact, right? Elections were coming up and they wanted to, you know, I guess campaign or whatever. I don't know how Israeli elections work. I don't think it was like, we're going to not negotiate with these guys anymore. I don't think that's what it think was. Think a little bit more. Okay, again, you're going to go to the second intifada. Second intifada. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, no, no. Wait. I'm not going to the second intifada. I'm just saying that, like, Sorry. of course, negotiations are going to end if there's an election coming up and a new administration is going to come in. It's probably inappropriate to negotiate through election time. Yeah. Okay. I agree. That's I probably agree. a policy of every country around the world. It happens in the United States. Yeah. People don't. But, yeah. But, okay. but, but we agree that it's not the Palestinians that pulled out or walked away from a deal. Right. They were negotiating. Right. I don't think. And it just. Uh, I don't uh, think I've ever said. Wait, I don't think I've, I don't think anybody's ever claimed or said that no, they no, no, walked no, away no. from Taba. Yeah. No, no. no. You, I, I think you had mentioned before that Palestinians keep walking away from deals because <laughs> they want to keep fighting because terrorists tell them to. Yes, the if Camp David summit. To a thing, okay, so the, you're talking about Camp David specifically. Yes. Then. Yes. And and when you say they wanted to keep fighting, was it just for six months before they started to talk about Clinton parameters? Uh, it was fighting forever, I guess. I don't know until then why they why they start talking why did they start negotiating on the Clinton parameters in December of did they 2000 yeah they did so they, the the Camp David was in June or July of 2000 and then right after Clinton came out with his more discreet parameters that both sides had quote unquote accepted with reservations both sides sent the reservations to Clinton Clinton claimed and uh, Clinton Clinton's claim was the Palestinians um, I guess uh, reservations were outside of the parameters, while Israel's uh, claims or uh, reservations were within the parameters. That's what happened. 
Okay. So what can, is so what is your point about this? Set of reservations. My, so we can look through both set of reservations on the Clinton parameters that Israel had sent, and that and we can read it for ourselves and make our own because it's they're available and make our own judgment. Were the Palestinian claims really outside the parameters when they were asking for things like maps and real percentages and more explanation on what exactly Clinton meant when he says 95% of the West Bank? Does that include East Jerusalem? Does that not include East Jerusalem? You can see word for word. So so Palestinians never walked away from the Clinton parameters, never walked away from Taba Summit. And your claim is they walked away to keep fighting because terrorists told them oh, to. Oh, never mind. And okay. I understand this. Okay. I think I under, I think I remember this story. Okay. Uh, you can tell me if this story is correct or incorrect. Uh, I'm going to do what you do. Will you yeah. give me a quote? Now I'm going to rely on a story for, told from one person, which was that um, Saudi Absolutely. Arabian foreign minister. So... Was this the agreement where it had been negotiated by both sides and it seemed like there was promise? And then when asked to affirm the agreement, Arafat waited days to send a response. And then when he finally did send a response, there were so many things where it's like, this doesn't work, this, that it essentially nuked the entire conversation that past that point, it was like, well, this is fucked. Is this the same story that I'm thinking of, guys in chat? Do you remember when we watched the? That is the story that you're talking about, but. Uh, no, and it was re later revealed via Israeli archives why it was a no, right? As Clinton said in his words, Palestinians accepted with reservations, but their reservations were outside of the Clinton parameters. Israel accepted with reservations, but their reservations were within the Clinton parameters. But if you actually look at the letter sent from Shlomo Ben Yabi, he's the one that was doing these negotiations to Clinton on what they don't accept, what they didn't accept were completely outside. They didn't even accept the percentage that, that Clinton was talking about. Okay, can you show Whereas me the, the letter where Ben Shavli or whatever didn't even accept the percentages? Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to give me some time. This is like an old Hebrew doc, but there's an English version. So give me a... Give me a... But you can you can at least for now read through the Palestinian that letter, and you can tell me what out of that you think is outside of the Clinton parameters. Like you you give me your case on why you think that that is outside of what Clinton had asked. Because in that letter, as I read it, and I could be wrong, and I could be biased. So I, I'm, I'm I read it as yeah. So I'm right now. I'm loading this a lot with the personal story that the Saudi Arabian foreign minister said. Okay, he made it sound yeah, like okay. the issue was that they had done all these talks, all these negotiations. And that while they were waiting for a response from Arafat to, to hopefully like start to reach an agreement, that after some number of days waiting for a response, when Arafat sent a letter back, it was loaded with so much. It was like the negotiations basically hadn't even happened. Well, the letter is right there. Let's let's, let's read the letter and see what- <clears throat> Mr. What President, so please much. allow me to address you with all sincerity emanating from the close friendship that ties us and the historical importance of what you're trying to do. I want to assure you of my will to continue to work with you to reach a peace agreement. I need your help in clarifying and explaining the basis of your initiative. I need clear answers to many questions relating to calculation of land ratios that will be annexed and swapped and the actual location of these territories, as well as the basis for defining the Wailing Wall, its borders and extensions, and the effect of that on the concept of full Palestinian sovereignty over Al-Haram Al-Sharif. We understand that the idea of leasing additional territory is an option we have the right to reject and is not a parameter of your bridging proposals. We also presume that the emergency Israeli locations are also subject to negotiations and to our approval. I hope that you have the same understanding. I have many questions relating to the return of refugees to their homes and villages. I have a negative experience with the return of displaced Palestinians to the West Bank and Gaza during the interim period. Because of the modalities remained tied to an Israeli veto, not one refugee was allowed to return through the mechanism of the interim agreement, which required a quadripartite committee of Egypt, Jordan, Israel, and Palestine to decide on their return. Equally, I don't see a clear approach dealing with compensation of the refugees for their land, property, and funds taken by Israel under the Aegis, the Israeli custodian of absentee property. I feel, Mr. President, that the period for Israeli withdrawal specified in your initiative is too long. It will allow the enemies of peace to exploit the time to undo the agreement. I wonder if the period is one of the fixed parameters of your proposal, a basis that cannot be changed. Mr. President, I have many questions. I need maps, details, and clarifications that can help me take the necessary decision with my leadership and people. I would like you to appreciate that I do not want to procrastinate or waste time. We need a real opportunity to invest once more. Your determination and creativity reach a fair and lasting peace with your efforts and during uh, with you efforts and during your presidency. I remain, Mr. President, ready to pay you a visit at the White House in the shortest possible time if you find this visit appropriate to discuss with you the bridging proposals and to exchange views on ways to develop them further. Please accept my highest regards and best wishes, Yasser Arafat. 
Okay, so I'm gonna send you now the Israeli. If you're interested. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Did you you did you want to talk to this? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like this essentially is asking for, again, more clarification on refugee compensation. On okay, so here. Okay, sorry. So let me give you this as a business guy. Let me give you this as a, as a business guy. Okay. Okay. This sure. is a nuked contract. If and I'm being very careful to make this contingent on this because if you can give me something different, then I will. You know, I'm like, okay, because I'm, I'm on most of what I've argued with about, okay, I'm arguing on the facts where I'm rock solid, okay, hard as a fucking cock. But right now, I'm giving you the narrativization from the Saudi Prime Minister, so I, or the Saudi Foreign Minister of the United States, so I could be wrong, okay. But in my personal experience, if I have a meeting with somebody, let's say I fly out to LA or San Francisco and I want to negotiate a deal, okay? If I fly out and we spend three or four days negotiating a deal, hammering it back and forth, blah, 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 okay? Let's say that we negotiate this deal early December, okay? They want something in ink before January 1st, okay? Let's say that I fly back to Miami and they email me, they're like, hey, what's going on? How do you feel about the deal, blah, blah, blah. Let's say that uh, December 23rd, let's say that I shoot them an email back and I go like, hey, listen, Everything looks okay, except for these 500 questions I have. That's a nuked contract. Okay. The other party's gonna okay. walk because they're gonna say, yeah. wait, wait, they're gonna say, bro, hold on. We just negotiated all this shit. You're gonna, we you told you that we have deadlines on this, which by the way, Clinton did, okay? Because you're at the end of December of 2000, okay, you're looking right for the next president to come in. And the narrativization that the Saudi minister gave was that like Arafat thought that maybe he could squeeze something more out of Bush Jr. So Arafat never wanted to sign this shit and he nuked it. And that's why at the very end, days and days after they'd already done all the negotiations, he sent this huge letter back saying, I need clarification on this and this and this and this and this and this and this why wasn't that part of the original okay. negotiations yes go ahead that is honestly a very fair question and i agree with everything you said okay now this is where the problem lies okay one negotiations happened at camp david after camp david six months later clinton had came up with hit what he thought were fair parameters that he set to both I don't know if they negotiated it in person or if he sent it to them individually. I don't know. Um, he sent it to both Israel and uh, the Palestinians. Both had accepted with reservations. That was what Clinton said. And what he said is the Palestinian reservations, what we're seeing here that was sent December 27th, was outside of the parameters. Right? So what I'm going to send you right now is Israel's uh, reservations that was actually sent January 3rd even after Yasser Arafat's uh, response. So the Israeli rejection is 20, not rejection, but reservations is 22 pages long of not only questions, some rejections, this and that. Okay, so let me send you that now. Yeah, go for it. This was a fucking bitch to find, by the way. Oh, fuck you. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be all written in fucking whatever oh, no. Moon Ruins this is. Okay. Is this, th this is the Israeli... Um, this is the Israeli's acceptance with reservations. Okay. It's so really long. You can read yeah, as much so as So which, which reservations here do you think are unfair or wait, not good? Wait, 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 wait. You just said that Arafat responding, asking a bunch of questions, is nuking the reservation. Is nuking the deal. This was sent after what Arafat sent. Is this not nuking the deal? Regardless, of I the don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to have. read through the reservations. If there are unfair, because what you quoted okay, me in the so beginning. Which, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, no, unfair. wait. You quoted me in the beginning. You said that Israel's reservations were within the Clinton parameters, or or somebody had said they were, and Arafat's reservations were outside. So if Correct. this is like a twenty-page document where they're like, well, we don't know if we want to lease this office or that office, or well, we don't know if we would accept this particular thing, so but they're all within. Answer, wait, 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 wait. But they're all within like the parameters, and it could be a hundred right. pages. It would still be fair. And and same thing with the with the pages and pages back that Arafat could send. It could be fair. Um, That's not what you said. You didn't say that these could be fair uh, points that Arafat's making. You said the fact that he's asking all these questions in December, right before the election, is nuking the agreement. Those were your words. You didn't tell me anything specifically here that you thought was unfair. Okay, I told you that I'm giving you the narrativization from the Saudi prime minister, okay, that 
Arafat's questioning here was one you said outside of the parameters and two was asking questions that made it seem as though you have to go completely back to the drawing board on everything that they're talking what about. What here is outside of the parameters? You tell me. In this letter that you just read, what is outside of the parameters in your opinion? Uh, well, I don't and even I'm, know. And I'm not going to disagree on anything. Okay, hold on. I don't know what the clear parameters said at the beginning. I'm giving you your quote that you gave me in the beginning. You okay, said sure. that it was so, said that his questioning or reservations were outside the parameters, but that Israel's I'll reservations you, were inside the parameters. I will tell you what I believe is considered outside of the parameters. So if you open the letter I just sent you, on page three, starting with the territory of the Palestinian state, you can start from there. Uh, this is the, yeah. Page three. Oh, what are you looking at? Uh, all the way at the top. Oh, the third on the document? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Do you want me to read this page? So if you start, yeah, start reading from however much you want. I think the first paragraph, the United or the States, first two paragraphs I'm just gonna read. Kind of the United States presented proposals regarding four primary issues, territory, Jerusalem, refugees, and security. Territory of the Palestinian state. On the issue of territory, the United States proposed that Israel annex four to six percent of the West Bank, that the annexations be compensated through a land slot of one to three percent, and that the parties also consider a swap of leased land. The United States recommended the final map be drawn in a manner that would place 80 percent of Israeli settlers in annexed settlement blocks, um, but that would nevertheless promote territorial contiguity, minimize annexed areas, and minimize the number of Palestinians affected. This proposal poses a number of serious problems. As the proposal is not accompanied by a map and because the total area from which the percentages are calculated is not defined, it is difficult to imagine how the percentages presented can be reconciled with the goal of Palestinian contiguity. This is especially worrisome in light of the fact that the Israeli side continues to insist and the United States has never questioned that Jerusalem, as defined by Israel, the no man's land, and the Dead Sea are not part of the total area from which the percentages are calculated. Moreover, the United States proposal calls for the swap of leased land. It is not entirely clear if Palestinian interests are served by such a swap since the Palestinian side has no territorial need needs in Israel, except for a corridor linking the West Bank of the Gaza Strip, which will be covered in a land swap. This proposal, taken together with the map presented by the Israeli side in the most recent round of negotiations in Washington, see attached map, provides Israel with control over large swaths of land, rendering the Palestinian state unviable and lacking direct access to international borders. Without a map clarifying the above ambiguities, the United States proposal does nothing to foreclose a return to Israel by Israel to its proposal at Camp David, which leaves 10% of the West Bank under Israeli sovereignty and additional percent under Israeli control. Pursuant to ill-defined security arrangements, it is important to bear in mind that all the settlements in the West Bank currently occupy approximately 2% of the West Bank. In this context, Palestinian side rejects the use of settlement blocks as a guiding principle. But okay, okay, so here's a question that I have when this was negotiated. Did they not have any maps at all? Or what What no, were these negotiations? No, no maps were- no fucking maps. It's ridiculous. I agree. It's fucking stupid. Both sides are like, what's the maps? Camp David, no map. Alba Summit, no map. Clinton parameters, whoa, whoa, no whoa, map. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. My understanding Alba is, might have a map. no, no, wait. My understanding is Camp David did have maps. I think those are the last I like have, concrete maps that were. Uh, maybe, maybe you're right. Okay. Uh, may, maybe you're right, actually. I'm not sure. I think the Camp David was the one with like the four blocks, right? The four disjoined blocks of with the West Bank. Is that the one? Um, wait, so, uh, maybe. I think that was Camp David was the last good map. So those are the last good maps that I saw. Yeah, I think Camp David is the one that split up the West Bank into, like, four parts. Or, or two, three parts. Some, some, like, some, like, parts. And, uh, Israel wanted to keep up to, like, 10% sovereignty over the West Bank, not including Jerusalem. Obviously, they wanted sovereignty over parts of the, the Jerusalem as well. Uh, Camp David was, I think it's right there. The third one the top row okay these were the these camp maps. david summits this was the final israeli map oh, jesus christ child porn okay my god all right you know that sorry um this is the final map i think that israel had proposed at camp david maybe yeah. the clinton parameters were working off this <laughs> this looks like a dick uh maybe um maybe they were working off these maps or something i don't understand what the uh, and I, also what, by israel, the way i don't know a lot about the yeah. the clinton parameters negotiations i know more about camp david and the top of summit i don't know that much about the clinton parameters i don't understand what the clinton parameters were if they had no if no maps were discussed because that seems like the one of the most important things so i'm not sure so the, the reason why the clinton parameters is so important to, uh is because again there's a narrative, and this is what Bill Clinton said, and he's been called by many as like lying about this specific thing until the Israeli, milita or Israeli archives had finally released the actual letter that we just went over that was sent to Bill Clinton, showing that it wasn't just the Palestinians and Arafat nuking the deal. Both sides had 
so many more questions. Both sides had so many more reservations. And Israeli side had 22 pages of it. So it wasn't the Palestinians walking away from a deal. Uh, that, again, is false narrative, fake news. Okay, so we just... Do you think... Okay, hold really, on. Could it be yeah. the case that... And I... Because and I, I don't know much about the Clinton parameters, okay? Could it be the case that Israel sending back a 20-page letter explicitly stating like, hey, these are the things that like we want changed or these are the questions that we have, that that's like a better faith response than Arafat sending a letter saying like, hey, I've got a bunch of questions, but not... Did Arafat send like a more detailed response or... Arafat wanted to extend the time to negotiate. I think he wanted to... Uh, I have to reread the letter. I do I agree with what you're to, saying there. He wanted to extend the time to negotiate. And then again, just so as like, a warning, narrative. I'm, the, the Saudi Prime Minister, Bandar or whatever, he said that Arafat wanted to extend because every time Arafat gets something good, he wants to push for more. And that's what happened in Camp David. And then eventually with the Clinton parameters, it happened because he wanted. He started making meetings with Bush saying, hey, you know, we was working this shit with Clinton. Can we do something different? And then Bush was like, ah, we'll start over. Fuck you. I don't do anything that Clinton did. And then he kind of... And that's like one of the reasons why a lot of shit got fucked afterwards okay, okay. I, I don't know who the saudi guy that you keep referencing if you if like I, again I don't, I don't know who he is but i'm just talking about with the letters that we see here you're saying now and you 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 changed what you originally said you're saying that well israel explained what they wanted more that so therefore they were within the parameters what they were asking for because the, like okay, hold on. Here, let me walk you through this. The original thing that I said was that if you're stalling and then you send a huge list of reservations at the end, okay, that generally that's a way to nuke a deal. That's my understanding of it, okay? Then okay. you showed me Arafat's letter. This letter seems to have quite a few questions. I'm like, okay, well, this seems to nuke a deal. Then you send me the Israeli ones, and this one also has a, a fair list of questions, I'll admit, and it's, lo it's longer than Arafat's, that's fine. But then when I see questions on here that are like, um, you know, like, where's the map? Well, now I'm like, okay, well, hold on. Well, what did these initial negotiations even fucking that's look like? That's what Arafat asked, and you didn't say that. Arafat asked where the map was, and you, you said, nope, that's nuking the deal. Now you have a different narrative. Okay. If he literally he, here's, says, I need sure, a map. Sure, sure. Here, okay. Here's the difference, okay? And you can call me by this if you want. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I, hold on. No, no, first of all, I'm not making a single concession to you until you hardcore prove anything because you've ever made a single concession on anything despite being factual about a lot of things, okay? But there's a difference between me writing back the president saying, I got a lot of questions about this shit and not including the questions versus here's like 20 pages or 10 pages or whatever of like, I need this specified or this specified or this specified. That's not what, but, but, but Clinton never responded to either of these questions. Okay, well, I don't know what, to, then you tell me, now I'm asking you here, okay, what were the Clinton parameters? What were these negotiations if they didn't include maps? <laughs> yeah, Cl Clinton's parameters, quote unquote, was a percentage of the West Bank being given, uh, a qu the question on how we resolve Jerusalem, a question about refugees. It was like four topics, I think. I think the parameters should be on this page somewhere, like uh, towards the top. Like, here's a question. Did Arafat send anything more back than this letter? This was the initial letter to start, like, can I, can, I think he asks, like, can I come to Washington and we can talk? Okay, about so maybe there or... might have been a more detailed Palestinian response then, right, to match the level of the Israeli one. Like, he might have had more particular claims that he made and we just, that's just not yeah, listed. No, no, I'm not, even say, I'm not even saying that, oh, Israelis had more reservations. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying both sides had reservations. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying both sides equally had reservations. Yeah, but, but the, the beginning, the beginning thing there, you said, which we haven't, we haven't figured out which and by the way because i'm arguing with this on you because it's still unresolved you could be correct here right the initial claim that you said was that somebody had stated i don't remember who you, i don't think you mentioned who somebody had stated that the israeli rejections or the israeli questions were within the parameters and that the yes. palestinian ones were outside the parameters that I have yet right. to see if that's the case or if that's established. It could be, for instance, that when we go through the Israeli ones that you've given me here, maybe one of the Clinton parameters was you have 95 percent land, no takesies, backsies. And that when we go through this Israeli letter, they're saying, well, actually, we only want to do 92 percent. If that was the case, then you, if your argument is Israel, their response was outside the parameters and they nuked the conversation. But I would agree with you. I'd say, OK, yeah, Israel is clearly requesting something that when they negotiated, it was outside of the bounds of what should have been like questions afterwards i would agree with you there i just haven't seen that if you can show me that then i'm like okay yeah you're right 100 percent. oh if you, if you go to the third paragraph of the wiki page of the clinton parameters you'll see the quote that i'm talking about okay uh it one was two by three clinton all the way to the top 
Yeah. The White House confirmed this the following day in a statement, which said that both sides have now accepted the president's ideas with some reservations. In 2005, Clinton wrote that he considered the Israeli reservation with the parents of the Palestinians outside of it. Okay, so it was Clinton that said this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's where I got that quote from. I don't know how accurate that quote is, but since then, Clinton has been rejected or accused of multiple people of just blatantly lying about this. Wait, Clinton was um, after, accused of blatantly lying about this? About about the within the parameters and outside the parameters only after the uh, the Israeli letter was made public by the Israeli government. Okay, because before, it, used, it was like not. I can uh, I can believe that because my understanding is I could be wrong, but my understanding is Clinton fucking hated Arafat after everything that had happened, and I think Clinton felt like personally that Arafat had fucked him on the negotiation. So Maybe. even if Israel was more responsible, it would make sense narratively that Clinton would be like, you know what, actually it was all Arafat, fuck that piece of shit, he fucked me hard, even if he, he, and he could be biased or wrong. I, so I would believe that, that, I'm saying this with no evidence at all, but I would believe that because it fits the story of like Clinton and, uh, and Arafat's uh, history. But, uh, yeah. but a and lot of people have accused Arafat of being a liar or being untrustworthy yeah, dude, or- fucking, I'm not like a fan of Arafat here. I'm not trying to like do him any graces, right? I'm just, uh, uh, my only my only argument here in this entire conversation about the Clinton parameters was both sides had reservations. That's it. And the Israel uh, reservations and the Palestinian reservations, sure, one side is longer and more descriptive, but both sides seem to either be asking for more information or outside of what Clinton. Quote, yeah. Unquote, okay. Here, can I? Okay. Can I pull back and then we're gonna let me turn down a little bit. Can I scream at you? I do appreciate these conversations, by the way, because I learn a lot more even if I disagree. So I do appreciate that. Okay, I just want to say that even though I'm screaming at you a lot. Okay. Um, let me. I'm gonna give you like a macro, personal, real life problem, and then apply it to this, and then I want you to look at it through okay. this lens. And, and this is how I'm kind of viewing this broadly speaking. Okay. Um, I go over to a friend's house and uh, I want to go out and meet some friends tonight. Okay. I go over to the guy's house um, and then I walk in and he's already like drinking a little bit. And you know, he's a little bit drunk and I'm like, bro, we're gonna go hang out with these people. When you drink, you get kind of wild, this is stupid. And the guy's like, oh, come on, like, let me have a few drinks. I'm like, okay, fine, have a few drinks, blah, 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 blah. We get in the car, we drive, okay? We go and we hang out with some friends, okay? When we get to the friend's place, you know, they've got some beers. And, you know, I'm like, look at my friend, I know he's a little bit whatever, and I'm, and I'm kind of like, he probably shouldn't drink. And he's like, no, come on, dude, it's fine. He starts drinking, blah, 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 blah. This type of thing carries on throughout the night. And then by the end of the night, shit is fucked. He gets blackout drunk. He makes a fool of himself, okay? He molests some fucking girl. Everything is fucked. And then he's my friend, and now I look like a loser. Like, fuck me, okay? I feel like something that happens in personal conflict a lot is people will come out of a conflict, and they'll look at two different parties. Uh, you can even like apply this to like rape, uh, I, um, rape apology, kind of, or victim blaming, right? People will look at both sides, and they'll go, both of you guys could have taken steps to stop this 100%. And while that might be true, invariably, there will be one side that is so much more responsible for the failings. So like in that, in the prior story that I just told you, if I would have had a bigger backbone, if I would have gotten to the house, I would say, bro, stop drinking, or I'm not taking you. If we would have gotten to the party, I would have said, don't give my friend alcohol or I'm leaving, he's crazy. Or if my friend started getting you a drug, I'm like, I'm getting you in an Uber and you're leaving right now, I'm calling the cops. At any of those points, I could have stopped that interaction completely. But my friend also would have just not been a fucking piece of shit, everything would have been fine. When I look at the negotiations between Arafat and Israel, I notice this issue where, okay, maybe Israel is kind of undermining the PLO by negotiating with Arafat and also maybe uh, Israel is not like working to the best, I guess, of their abilities for the Clinton parameters or whatever. But at all stages of this, if you just swap out Arafat, Israel-Palestine is solved. Like, I don't think you could say the same case for the Israeli side. That's kind of my, my broad issue with this. And then we can go, that's how I feel broadly on it. I don't know if you agree or disagree broadly, and then we can microscope back into any of the particular things. Yeah. I, I, I disagree for one reason. I don't think if Arafat was replaced with, let's say, someone who's much more like pragmatic and fair, like Edward Said, for example, he was a member on the PNC for like 30 years. Um, I don't think there would have still been a deal because I think somebody smarter than Arafat and uh, wouldn't have ever made a 91% thing, all except 91%, all except 95%. I don't think that would have happened. I think Arafat was stupid. He was a stupid negotiator. I think anybody smarter than him would have said, came to the, the table and said, I want 100% of pre-67 borders. Any inch of land you take from within the West Bank, fine. I need equal land swap. 
I think that's what somebody. I, I think that's what would have happened. So I, I think it's unfair to say, oh, if it was somebody, anybody else besides Arafat, this would have been one hundred percent done because obviously that's not the case with Mahmoud Abbas, right? The past twenty years, Arafat's been dead, and we don't have peace. Um, I think that there was a time for that, and now this might sound or feel shitty. I think that there might have been a time for those negotiations, but right now the time for that has passed because why? I, because the power. Because the Palestinians no longer have the allies that they need to negotiate that heavily. They're relegated to a second class citizen that honestly, if they settle on any deal, it's gonna come at the grace of the Israelis or at some, that's really it. Like, no, 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 I don't think that's it. I think either the grace of the Israelis, you're right, or it's like crazy international pressure, specifically from the US. But why, the but where, where right. is the US's pressure to do that? Well, the U.S. has a ton of support for Israel. How is that going to happen on the U.S. side? I think over time, I think um, here's the thing. The occupation that's happening right now in the West Bank is, Estony, I feel like you haven't even talked about this enough. It is so fucking brutal. Like, crazy brutal. Like, you can't be a normal, peace-loving human being living under the occupation, knowing that if you open your stores after hours, you can end up in prison for a year. If you fucking group with uh, 10 or more people, there's a military law saying, if you were in a group of 10 or more people, regardless of the reason, if you don't have a permit for that, you can face prison time. You can't protest peacefully. You can't wave a flag. You, so so forget about all the, like, like the, the Israel side always looks at like, oh, look at the, the violent stuff. Well, what about the non-violent stuff that the Palestinians are getting punished for? There's like no, there's no breathing room. That's why I believe the Palestinians will never give up because they don't have a choice. They can't just like live a normal life. Jordan can give up, Egypt can give up because they're all like within their countries. The Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, and I hate that I have to even say this, they're not just inherently violent and wanna kill Israelis. They don't want to live under occupation. You yeah, I understand, but the only way out of occupation is to make a deal. I don't disagree with anything you've just said. But but Israel in the past 15 years had no desire to make a deal. The Likud's charter doesn't call for a Palestinian state. It calls for a single Israeli state from river to sea. Okay, I don't know if that's exactly in the charter. Don't quote me. I'm just quoting, I think, Benjamin Netanyahu that one time said this. So, okay. Uh, but, but, but I'm just saying, like, if, if in 15, the past 15 years, 15 years is a long time. There's been no desire from Israelis to make a state. Of course not. The occupation yeah. has continued. The brutalization has continued. Living under military law. Destiny, if me and you lived in Bethlehem, our life fucking sucks. Like, period. Like, some people, their life sucks so bad, they're like, fuck this. I, I have nothing else to do but join some militant group. Those people are stupid. But I can see how people get to that point. I can see the path. Right? Why are other Arab states like Jordan and Egypt at this point, after they signed peace with Israel, why are they not attacking Israel? Because they fucking have peace. They figured it out. Why are the Palestinians that remained in Israel proper, why are they not upset? Because they're not occupied. It's the people that are living under occupation that are getting brutalized on a daily basis with, with or without I understand. Hamas. Listen, I get all the moral. None of this is changing anything I'm saying. Like, the What's only way out of this, Israel the only way out of this is a two-state solution. Can you can you blame Palestinians in the past 15 years for knowing that the Likud government has no interest, not just the Likud government, all of Israeli government has no interest in negotiating peace right now? What are they supposed to do? You tell me if you're a Palestinian well, where did the leader, failure, where did the lack of desire to negotiate peace come from? It came from violent act after violent act after so, violent so, act. So, so. The 2005 Intifada is the last violent act. Why did that? Why are the Intifadas even happen? That's not the last like, violent act. And the 2000 Intifada happened arguably no, saying, okay, because like, Arafat wanted to kill, fight uh, for territory. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm, when I say violent act, I mean like an, uh, a politically organized by the PLO in the West Bank violent act. That's you, what, I mean. what about Hamas? Uh, dude, again, Hamas is a trash organization that's trying to fucking. Yeah, but they, uh, even they operate like, in the West Bank sometimes. It's not like the PA or the PLO arrest them or hold them accountable why, or anything. Why? Okay, Destiny. Yeah. Why do you? Why does Hamas exist? Why do you think it exists? Like, like why do I think Hamas people? exists? The, yeah, the no, no, broad. Why, I've why, already why given people? my. Example. I think that Hamas exists. Here's what I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that Hamas exists because in 1948 there was a strong Arab identity that wanted to expel. 
uh, European settlers from their land, and that those people that were pushed, the 700 plus thousand Palestinians that were pushed off in 48, okay, during the Nakba, killed, pushed off, chased off, expelled, whatever, um, not whatever, it was a tragic event, that all the other countries wanted to fight, 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 fight. And that's all those Palestinians knew. There were the Fedayeen, yeah. there was PLO, there was Black September, there were the attempted coups, there's everything from Lebanon, okay? Fight, 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 yeah, fight, yeah. fight. But eventually, as these states stabilized over time, as their economies grew, as the US came in and gave them a lot of money, they were like, fuck this, we're done fighting. Egypt stopped, okay? Nasser supported Fedayeen camps all across Israel's border, okay? When Sadat signed peace with Israel, that fucking sucked. Okay, they st and they didn't do that with Palestinian well-being in mind. Okay, Jordan signed peace with Israel. Really, they were peace with Israel even before Yom Kippur. They signed peace with Israel, and then everything was yeah. chilled there. So now that Palestinians have lost the na the Arab nationalistic forces behind them, the only thing left are Islamic jihadist extremists. Those are the only people that are still supporting them. So now when we roll the clock forward, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you're a Palestinian, well, who has your back? It's not other Arabs. They don't give a fuck about you. It's sure as fuck is in other Arab countries. They don't give a fuck about you. It's Islamic jihadist extremists. It's the Houthis, it's Hezbollah, and it's Iran. And then it's in, in there's somebody I like Hamas. Agree. Yeah, so when you ask me, where does Hamas come from? Hamas comes from the fact that Palestinians have been told to fight, 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 fight for their whole lives, and then people quietly kind of backed away from behind them, and then they realized they were on their own, and now the only people wanting to join them are Islamic extremists. That's what it feels so like. So I, I, I agree up until a certain point. I don't think in the 2000s Palestinians have wanted to fight, 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 fight. In 2000 they point, did, absolutely. Wait, 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 hold on. We'll talk about the second intifada. Yeah. Why did the first intifada happen? That was the big one, right? This was before Hamas. Why did well, that start? Okay. People are living under occupation. Jordan is about to make peace. Egypt has already made peace. Mm -hmm. These people have no prospects no leadership of theirs is even recognized by Israel. Mm -hmm. Nothing, right? Sure. That's why the, the first intifada, you, you you can't- Yeah, it was 87 to 93. It was, it was largely peaceful-ish. It was protests just. and everything. Yeah, I think it was, I think but the first, he, he, I think most people consider the first intifada was generally peaceful. It was capped off by the Oslo Accords. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. I think they were totally within their right to protest and everything. Sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the second intifada, after Arafat, ignorantly, I think he should have rejected the deal at Camp David, by the way. Absolutely. You think he, like, should, he should have? have? Oh, for sure. Did you you just saw the Camp David map, bro? It looks like a fucking like Camp a, like David a kidney disease. Hold on. Look up Camp David map. It looks like a fucking kidney disease. Considering that this was the is Wait, this was the Israeli final offer, right? This is about Wait, this is about as contiguous as you're probably gonna get right now. Wait, hold, hold, hold on. Let's let's be real here. Okay. All of the all, all do you see the East Bank, uh, the, the stripes there? Yep. That's all Israel. Jericho is an island on its own, right? They have hold on, real quick. One my real quick, real quick, because I, I actually don't know. Is this just is this supposed to be Israel 100 percent controlled with no Palestinians living there, or is this just a demilitarized zone for them to monitor the border? As my understanding, it's an Israeli militarized zone, and those triangles, I believe, that you see, are supposed to be settlements. I'm not sure, though. I, I think, does this map have like a... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, initially, Israel designated security zone to be transferred to Palestinian sovereignty. So it is, so this is supposed to be transferred to the Palestinians eventually. Um, but initially, it's a, yeah. And then Israeli uh, cities and settlements are the triangle things, sure. Yeah, so... Again, like you think this is an if you're a Palestinian leader, would you accept this? Absolutely. In Wait, 2000? Yeah, yeah. yeah, bro, the walls <laughs> are closing in. You have no more allies. You've lost the fight completely. No, no but but you but that w w where is your moral standing? Your moral standing is that one you don't want to fucking be set like dude, look at these roads. Look at the Israeli roads going through your country. Like, let's say this is a permanent settlement. What are the settlements that are going through your country? What about the roads going through your country? What about the military surrounding you? Like, this is not a real country. This is, this is like horseshit, okay? But Arafat shouldn't have just said, no, we want, uh, I think he said something like, we want all of the pre-67 borders da, 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 and walked away. That's where he fucked up, right? But Well, but this was, later, the, keep in mind, this was also the final Israeli offer. There was no counter offer here from Arafat for what they would have liked to to have no, seen. no, I agree. I, I I think that was so stupid on Arafat's part, right? I think he should have done that. But we have to be honest. Six months later, the negotiations continued. It's not like it just ended, right? 
Six months later is when the Clinton parameters happened. Yeah, but six months happened. later, you're running into a change in administration. Like you're running out of time. You're running into a change of administration I, I, on on the on the U.S. side and on the democracy suck. What, what do you want me to tell you? Like, well, then you got to work with it. You have to work around it, and that's Arafat's fault. That was strategic on his part to try to milk more from Bush afterwards, or because he wanted to do no, the no, second okay, intifada. That, that, that. You're parroting the, the Saudi guy with the milk more from Bush afterwards. Again, we read through the letters. They both had reservations. And that's that, okay? Um, all I'm saying is the Palestinians from 2005, or not in 2005, 2002, forget two, now, now after Taba, 2002, every single Arab state unanimously voted. We accept Israel. We offer peace to Israel on the pre-67 borders on the a just solution for the refugees. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. What did you just say? Every Arab state accepted. Wait, which one are we talking about right now? Hold on. So the Arab 2002 Peace Initiative recognizes 242, recognizes there needs to be a. Wait, just wait, wait, wait. Is this refugees. 2002 peace, peace Initiative? Is this the one that calls for the full right of return? No, no, no. no. A peaceful resolution to the refugee problem. My understanding is the the huge disagreement here is over what is going to be over the right of return. No, no, no. It says right there, right? The relevant passage to the decisions matter to accept to find an agreed just solution to the problem of refugees. In conformity with resolution 194. 194 is the one that's calling for resolu uh, all the refugees to return. That's what the <laughs> Okay, wait, that's like. that's full right of return. No, no, dude. It's literally saying a just solution. It's not saying full right of return. No one says it full says right of refugees in conformity. To conform to means to match with. In conformity with 194, 194's text states refugees wishing to return to their homes and live at peace with their neighbors should be permitted to do so at the earliest practicable date and that compensation should be paid for the property of those choosing not to return and for loss of damage or property which under principles of international equity should be made good by the governments where authorities are responsible. This sounds like a full so right of return. Look, I'll tell you why I think that's this is kind of uh, an unfair interpretation by you. Because Israel didn't reject this because of the refugees. They rejected it because of the borders. Sure, they could reject it for any number of things, but sure. Okay, so 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 it's not like they said, oh, well, Arabs expect to... Well, wait, wait, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, wait, real Arab quick. Wait, 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 wait. When you say they rejected it or accepted it, I, this isn't like a rejection or an exception. This isn't anything post Israel, right? I, oh wait, hey, is this? I thought this was just like an, the Arab League just like had this like thing. They all come together and like we support this. Exactly. They endorsed unanimously. Uh, the PLO endorsed it. Everyone endorsed it, and Israel was kind of happy to see it. Like, oh, this is great. We're gonna have to like you know, any any talks of borders or something is gonna have to be done through negotiations, right? That's what happened. So, I think, uh, do you do you believe that post two thousand five? Do you feel that Israel has any threats from Jordan uh, or like it's like does it have any security threats where it would need to build? I don't think they have any security to... threats right now. Okay, so if Israel's and you tell me who you think is bad faith in the past fifteen years. One side is continually building settlements. One side is continually demolishing homes. One side is continually removing Palestinians from their homes on you know bullshit basis, and I can we can go into that if you want. Like the Sheikh Jarrah one, that was very popular. And the other side has over and over tried to say, let's negotiate. It's, it's your position is so, and I understand because we're used to treating Palestinians as just being terrorists, I guess. Okay. But if we, if we actually view all the people in this area as like normal, real life, real human beings. Okay. Uh -huh. The idea of like, let's make peace, let's make peace, let's make peace, as one like elected body is pouring rockets into your country, okay? Because keep in mind, the Iron Dome did exist, didn't even start to function until 2011. So you got six whole years where rockets are just pouring out of the Gaza Strip, right? That's kind of of a hard sell, my friend. Like, yeah, okay, when you're saying like, me. why are they, they're not even, like Israel's not even attempting to negotiate peace with the PA that has a martyr fund for if you die fighting uh, settlers or Israeli soldiers or Hamas okay. who are continuing Jesse, dumping do you know what martyr means? Do you know what martyr means? Yes. Martyr. What, what, so what, people what? in the West incorrectly assume that martyr means that you just die while you're trying to fight and kill somebody. But technically, the way that I believe uh -huh. the PA defines martyr is that can extend to if, say, a settler goes into a village and just kills you um, and you aren't doing anything wrong or even being violent. They would consider all of those people like part of the Shahid or dying for the cause yeah, of the Palestinian. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So right now, there's 15,000 martyrs in Gaza. That's the way the Palestinians see it. 
okay? Including the children, including the women, including uh, literally anybody that dies sure. on their land. But of those 15,000 people, some of them are probably Hamas militants, right? I mean, of course some of them are Hamas militants. Like, so, you have to be fucking stupid to argue yeah. against. So, but so, so at least 70, 70% of them, 70% of them are women and children. That, that women and children, the children thing means nothing. I don't know what the children thing doesn't mean nothing. No. If you want to break this down to like under 10 or under 11 or under 12, sure, right? But when you got videos of like 13 year olds running around stabbing multiple people and shit, you can't be like, children, children, children. Like a 16, 17 year old male, okay? He's like, yeah. A 13 year old, again, a 13 year old or a 15 year old or a whoever year old stabbing, according to what we had talked about previously, an Israeli soldier is protected under armed struggle. No, okay? they're is not. Is the act, wait, wait no. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish my point. Is it a fucking stupid act that's gonna net nothing positive? I 100% agree with that. But I can't look at that in the same way I look at some random dude walking up to another random dude in the middle of Chicago getting stabbed. Very different, okay? Do you agree with that at least? That those two situations they're, they're are di very I can different. agree that they're different, but like trying to apply all of these international standards and everything in ways that they've like never been applied before in any other countries that are, it's completely novel every single true. time it is That's of course true. it's true no no no. Na this happened in nambia what are you talking about in the in, when they talked about armed struggle they specifically call it for the nambians and the palestinians as like two examples of where is it nambia or is it namibia i you i uh, just you i don't remember i only learned the maps ones. okay it might be uh namibia uh so for namibia 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 i don't know pronounce this shit <laughs> I just know from the map games, right? It's It looks to me like, and I don't know any of the history, the only thing I know about Africa are the names of the countries, okay? Was this one sovereign country being occupied and oppressed by another sovereign country? You are asking the wrong guy. Okay, but I know that Namibia is a country. I know that South Africa or Botswana or Angola, who, who are the people that were occupying them? I'm just asking your brother some example. And maybe you've only peripherally heard about it. I'm not gonna hear it grow you. I don't know anything about it either. But like, I'm, when I'm saying, when I say novel application, I mean, everything about Israel and Palestine is novel. This is like a really unique situation. And when people are so quick to say, oh, well, it didn't work in this place. It's like, okay, but this is like very disanalogous. It's like not the same thing at all. So it's hard to, Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the argument that you're making right now and why I think it's, and I'm gonna use a very extreme example. Do it. If I go mm -hmm. and murder 5,000 people, mm -hmm. just me, by myself, that is now a novel situation. Uh -huh. Does that mean laws don't apply to me the same way because it's so novel and we've never seen anything like this? Potentially, it depends on what we're talking about, right? Let's say, for instance, <laughs> let's say that you come live, on. let's say that, okay, you said, come on, I'm going to challenge you with okay, a counterexample. Okay. Let's say that you live in a state <laughs> and this state has decided, you know what, we are full on with um, restorative justice, okay? We're not going to lock up anybody for more than 20 years. Let's say somebody moves to that state and let's say that they rape and then murder 5,000 14-year-old children. Do you think that the state would go, well, we said 20 year olds or whatever, or do you think they'd say, hmm, this is a novel situation. We're gonna look at this a little bit differently or change something. I don't think it's the same. No, situation you need to, hold on, we're gonna, I'm gonna, you can say something if you want, but I'm gonna okay, bring you yeah, right sure, back sure, to that sure. question. Cause you laughed hey, and you wait, said, come say, on. Say, say, that, say, say that question again, sorry. A state me, decides 20 year thing. max oh. prison sentence. Cause that's all we're gonna do. Cause we believe in rehabilitation. Guy moves to that state, okay. rapes and murders 5,000 14 year olds. Do you think that that state might stop and reconsider? And say, hold on, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think they would reconsider. Okay, so the novel situations can call for novel analyses, right? That there's something I different. Mean, no, or one's, no, no one's reconsidering in fucking forty years of this. Like people agreeing on this. Like I don't, I don't. Who's disagree? Who's? I, I think everything is like up to everything is like up for interpretation and disagreement here in terms of like what the only agreement you have, I guess, is you and resolutions, which f fuck all. But I'm just saying that like all of this stuff is like novel and here I'm going to back up and do another macro thing and then micro in and then you can tell me if you agree or disagree. Here's my issue. Okay. This is my big issue. Okay. If somebody comes up to me. Okay. If somebody comes up to me and they say, uh, my friend, uh, my friend got raped last night. Okay. Can we do a non-rape example? Hold on. I um, I mean, it's all you. You've been giving this. Yeah, I know. I do. I just, it's just like, what can I say, man? Uh, you know, rape and racism is the only thing that exists in my gusano brain. Um, okay, let's say that somebody says, um, <clears throat> Kyle Rittenhouse murdered two people, all right? Okay, Rittenhouse murdered two people. Okay, well, hold on. What's that? When you say murder, what's what? You said Rittenhouse? Um, yeah, he's a white kid in the United States. He shot. Oh, sorry. 
the person. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So Kai Rittenhouse is a really famous self-defense case over some riots in a place called Kenosha. Okay. So Rittenhouse, somebody says, oh, that kid, he murdered two people. And then you look at it, it's like, well, hold on. He killed two people. Okay. Murder is a strong word, but he killed them and it was real self-defense. Um, uh -huh. If I'm arguing with a person, if you wanna argue about the facts of what happened and whether or not it was good or bad, if somebody continually throws around like, well, he murdered them, it was blah, 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 murder. When they invoke that term, I feel like what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring this moral gravity in from another term because they don't wanna just argue the actual facts because if the facts stand yeah. with them, then we just argue the facts. But when they try to bring in all the other stuff and all the other baggage, I feel like, okay, well, one, I feel like you're weakening your credibility because now you're making this way more complicated than it needs to be. And then two, now it makes me wonder if you don't think your arguments are actually good and that's why you have to pull in other stuff, right? When I look at the conditions of the Palestinians that live in the West Bank, okay, on the fact of the matter, Everything that you said earlier, I 100% agree with, okay? Every human being on this planet that has a shred of empathy should feel bad for the Palestinians living in the West Bank. They should feel bad for the Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip, okay? Their life is horrible in a number of different ways that can be accurately compared to apartheid conditions, okay? I think I don't think anybody would disagree with that, okay? You, like, there's a really, really, really bad fact of the matter. But then when I go to argue with people, I feel like this is what I feel like the argument should look like, okay? We need to stop the, uh, we need to stop the, the double standards that the Palestinians live under, and we need to figure out like a, a, a final solution, huh? A final solution or resolution to the disagreements between these two people, that's it. But instead it's, well, I think that the occupation is illegal in apartheid conditions and it's a genocidal state that Israel is conducting against these people in a way that's been resolution UN, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, we're not even hey, like- Do you feel like I'm doing that though? Yes. Because, because I feel like when, like for instance, how important it was for you to finally get that there was a 2004 advisory ruling that the camps in Palestine were, uh, were illegal. Because you know what's funny about that? I'll say one thing, that, that the ruling or that decision by the ICJ, it basically means nothing to me. I actually don't care if they're legal or illegal. I still think they're wrong. And furthermore, I don't think it means anything to you because if tomorrow the oh, ICJ not it really doesn't exactly because tomorrow if the ICJ were to say actually we analyze the conditions and because of and how the UN Charter works yeah, and yeah, Israel no, yeah you would say like I let's agree. say yeah they say yeah they're not illegal you go I don't care that they're not illegal. actually fuck you they're still wrong right so why would we know. even have that part of the argument we would just say like yeah they're wrong and we need to figure out a way to stop it rather than trying to, to <laughs> subsume all this other shit okay so I rambled a lot go ahead yeah no, no you're, you're you're absolutely right and I, I don't disagree I don't think it matters the legality technical you know technically I just hate when people there's been this like attempt, in my opinion, of of uh, you know people to completely just pretend that this is not happening. Okay, there is no occupation because it's not a country. There is no occupation because no one has ruled it an occupation. The settlements aren't illegal because no one ruled it's illegal. It's not an apartheid because they're different citizens. It's just it's such bullshit weaseling where it's like doesn't take into consideration. There's fucking people that don't have rights i agree but like However this is your but this is what you're doing right like in my opinion no, wait, 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 like no, no, like I in the gaza strip the gaza strip we don't have to argue no. whether it's an occupation or not i don't give a fuck if there's a standing army there that's controlling shit the reality is the facts on the ground and the living conditions are dictated by israel for the interests of israel and not the people living there full stop we don't even have to talk about whether it's a military the occupation or it's internationally justified yeah Maybe this is unfair to you, but the only reason I even brought up the legality of the, the settlements is because I always hear you like trying to almost argue against it where it's like if you're like, if you just said, I don't care if it's legal or illegal, I don't care what people say, like it's obviously bad, mm -hmm. then I would have never brought it to you. But I'll see you like staring at like an article for like, like three hours of, of explaining on why it's technically not legal. But who cares? All these bodies think it's illegal. Maybe you well, sure. I mean, hold on. To be clear, I'm only. I just read things because people ask about it. Because like, oh, is it illegal? Is it legal? Is it blah blah blah? I don't know the. But if people ask me, I'll give my opinion. I'm not sure if they're illegal. I don't know. You've given me now that 2004 yeah, I, advisory I, opinion. Maybe maybe it is in the the position of the ICJ that they're illegal or whatever. So I just I like to know. But I don't think it's like a strong okay. argument for, or I don't think it's any argument for or against. Because I don't think most people care if the ICJ. Just like on these UN resolutions you present me. What if it was tomorrow a new UN resolution came out? And they're like Israel is fully justified in doing whatever they need to do in the Gaza Strip to clear out Hamas. Then all of a sudden our positions would. Well, no, my position would stay the same. I'd say, I don't give a fuck about resolutions because they're just like, oh, this yeah. is what we think. But you would say, well, hold on. I don't give a fuck. About hold on. You're telling me that the most of the world thinks that Israel can kill 100,000 civilians? Like, fuck that. That resolution is bullshit, right? So I don't think either of us really care about the resolutions. Yeah. I, yeah. De De Destiny, so you, you, you said that you believe 
okay, you don't care about the resolutions. You believe there's an occupation. It's brutal. You believe that settlements, who cares if they're illegal? They're fucking stupid. Yeah. Okay? And they're bad. And I don't even and think they serve Israel's not... security interests. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like religious and fanatic I, losers. Yeah. I, yeah. I believe that these settlements are being built with the attempt to take more. It's uh, territorial. It's expansionist. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay. 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 So Israel is technically an expansionist state. At least today it is. Maybe it wasn't in the past. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I would obviously qualify that because people are going to say in 67. There. But if you would say like from 2000 onwards or how do you explain the settlements? Sure. Yeah, that'd be my answer. I, the I settlements say, are expansionist. Like, yeah, it's for annexation. Yeah. 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 Post wars, I guess I would say. Um, okay. So then this is where I think we disagree. Uh -huh. You'll say, uh, and I've heard you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the reason why Israel doesn't want to make peace with the Palestinians right now is because of all the terrorist attacks. Well, and I would argue it's OK. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'm half there. Right. Because I said, remember what I've said before a lot, too, is in a way, especially the conservatives don't want to make peace with Palestine because it serves Israel's interest not to right now. Remember, remember what I said before. I don't know if I was talking with you or somebody else. Both sides right now think the same thing. But the Palestinians are delusional. Both sides think that if they, they continue the status quo and they keep fighting, it will benefit them in the end. Israel's correct. Palestinians are wrong, but they both want to keep fighting. So part of the reason why Israel probably enjoys the continued conflict to some extent is because it gives them the moral right to continue the settler expansions, to continue the separation of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, to continue military activities, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it, it helps them. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think when you say Palestinians are just, they just want to keep fighting, we fighting. When I, I say that, what I mean is I believe the last polling data show that Hamas. over 60 percent. Hamas, no, right? I'm not. I'm talking about Palestinians in the West Bank and okay, the Gaza well, Strip. My understanding okay. is that over 60%, I think it was 60% or over. I wish I could find this exact poll because I referenced it a lot. I should have it ready to pull up. But I believe it's over 60% of Palestinians that if they continue to fight, it will serve their interests. Even past like a negotiated solution that they, they think if they will continue to fight, that it would benefit them in the future. They want to continue to have armed okay. resistance against Israel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll just assume that the poll's there. I'll take, I'll take your word for it. Mm -hmm. So I would argue that they only want to fight because of an occupation. Do you, do you, do you disagree with that statement? Um, yeah, and it, well, it depends on what you mean by occupation. <laughs> because some people okay. consider, remember, the entire existence of Israel is an occupation, right? From no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm saying specifically military occupation of the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the blockade on Gaza. If those didn't exist, mm -hmm. I don't think, and you can try to fight me on this, that people or 60% of the Palestinians still think that we should fight against Israel. I, here's here's what here's what I would say. Okay, if you want to, if you want me to give you a forecast, and if I could endow Israelis with all the patience of the Pope. Okay, sorry if that's sacrilege to you, uh, Jewish folks. Okay, here's what I would say. If Israel made peace and like almost unilaterally did a two-state solution, like listen, we're gonna give you the whole West Bank, we're gonna pull all the summits, blah 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 blah. If they did that and they and they gave them all this security, blah 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 blah. I think that there would be a dramatic uptick in violence against Israel that would continue for at least five to 10 years. But I think that after that, assuming Israel never responded, some sort of peace would eventually happen 10, 20, 30, 40 years in the future. That'd be my guess. But I would never ask a country to bear that violence for a decade. That's how I feel. Okay, then, then going back to my uh, another point that I had made, why haven't the Palestinians that became Israeli citizens took up arms in those in that decade after 48? Why why did they try to like overthrow the Israeli government and kill everybody? There was a good amount of people, right? It's like 20% of the population. I don't know. My why understanding is during the that? first and second intifada, a lot of them were involved in in, in attacks on Israeli no, no, citizens. No, no, no. But I don't no, know today. No, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. What do you mean? So, so I'm saying why in 48? when the Nekba happened, mm -hmm. the Palestinians that remained, why didn't they take up arms against Israel in 49, in 50, in 51, in 52? Probably because they were just part of the country and they were like, fuck it, why not? They were part of the country. They weren't fucking occupied. They weren't living under different laws. They had freedom of movement. They weren't, you know, subjugated to night raids. Like, idea of, of fighting your- Hold your on, wait, 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 stop, stop. Okay, even if I agree with everything you say, okay, and I, I'll just, I'll, I'll grant all of it, that pain doesn't go away as soon as you get freedom, right? Like that pain is going to be with you for 5, 10, 15, 20 years still oh, later. Sure. So sure. yeah, so that's for why I'm sure. saying that's that the there's going to be a dramatic uptick in violence initially and that as time goes on, maybe hopefully you would see that 10 down. Although now you're relying on not only the Israelis and the IDF not doing anything, you got to hope that a, an Israeli citizen doesn't go off the fucking hook and do another, uh, you know, cave of the, is it cave of the patriarchs, that Hebron shooter, Goldstein yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You got to hope that shit like that doesn't 
happen either, right? And that's just that won't that won't be the case. There's going to be Israelis or people doing violence or settler Zionist the state solution, a fucking giant wall between both states, okay, and the end of it. Now you had said one time you wished that Arabs didn't attack Israel to see if Israel would still try to conquer, you know, more and more land, right? Mm -hmm. You said that once. You, you, you were saying, you know, maybe Israel was opportunistic, but we'll never really know if they planned on conquering the land. Yeah. My argument is we'll never really know if the Palestinians are still going to be fighting Israel if they weren't under occupation. OK. And if the occupation ended, then all of the moral standing is with Israel. Israel has all like, dude, I'll be fucking protesting for them. You know, like you have to end the occupation. You have to build your fucking walls between right. Whatever dif whatever. Um, what am I thinking? Uh, whatever defense measures, security measures you need to take, right? End the occupation. Stop having people, stop building settlements, right? Stop having people live as second-class citizens. Dude, if you would read through some of these military orders, like if, if you decorate your flowers a certain way at your house, you can get arrested. It's the most crazy, inhumane shit. Of I don't like, are there might have been like room for this conversation. If we had this debate three or four months ago, I probably would agree with you. But post October seventh, this is a really hard sell, unfortunately. Like, dude, Israel's gonna look. Israel's gonna do what it needs to do. Israel's gonna do what it needs to do uh, up until like whatever they end this battle. But I'm saying after that, right? After they've they've done what they felt they need to do, there needs to be two states, or this there will can be. Never but but go, oh, bro. It's just the Palestinians have been fighting forever. <laughs> And it just that's it's, not true Destiny. it is they've true a, they've, they've been, been fighting, fighting since a reason no no wait hold on wait wait wait, wait stop stop you hold on wait wait hold on wait i'm gonna quickly you do you do this a lot okay a lot of people do this debate type things me okay i'll say people did x and then you'll say no and then you'll justify why they do x i don't know why people do this just say yes but then explain okay. why because i said palestinians have fighting forever and you said no they've had a reason to fight so yes then they have been okay. fighting forever well, yes well, no okay. and yet no 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 and yes no as in their plo and the pa has never been hasn't since i believe I, I need to check my dates on this. Yeah, I careful. Say the last 2005, after the Second Intifada, you can try to show me a time where the PLO has organized an attack against Israel. I don't think you'll find one. That's why I'm saying no and yes. Okay, I'm sure. Asking, I don't know if that I, happened, I, but I do know that, like, imagine, imagine. This is why I keep saying, like, if there could have just been some years where people would chill, and then we could see if Israel is fucking around or not. Imagine if in 2005, 2006, Fatah wins in the Gaza Strip, and then the Gaza Strip is ran for a while, and then Israel still goes in and like fucks with them and does like horrible shit. Then it's like, okay, well, this is like obviously mm -hmm. fucked. It's not good or whatever. But like that just hasn't happened. They elected Islamic okay. jihadists to Dude, fucking imagine, imagine that. Well, okay, we'll talk about why they elected Islamic jihadists. But why did ha like what did Hamas do after they went? Did they say, okay, now we're gonna fucking destroy Israel, or did they say, you know what? You recognize uh, Israel on the uh, pre-67 borders. We're willing to make a 50-year truce, or I forgot what the exact number of years was, and we're ready to end this. And I response, feel like I looked into this, and I don't think uh, I don't think Hamas was actually ever going to do this. No, they actually did say that. They said it, but I think it was undermined like two days. I don't think they ever actually meant that. We can you can go okay, and find look that because look to me, mm -hmm. if you can, f no, it, I mean the blockade started immediately after Hamas won, and even before the blockade. Uh, even wait, 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 wait. Did the blockade. blockade begin right after Hamas won, or did the blockade begin after Hamas expelled Fatah? No, oh, there was a two-year blockade even before the elections. When oh, Israel sure. Had pulled From out. 2005 to 2007, right? Yeah, yeah. But there, that there blockade, like a, a, that blockade was like way, way, way lighter than what exists now, right? And then in 2007, it intensified. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. And yes. then the after after the election, and we can look into this. Right after the election, and Hamas won, the blockade was put into place. Sure, but like. I mean, Israel obviously had reasons not to trust Hamas, and even the Palestinian Authority. They have wait. Did they not have reasons not to trust the PLO after all the terrorist attacks they did back in the 70s? Sure, but that's why they were working with the Palestinian Authority, right? Because in the Gaza Strip, hey, after the what second... What is the Palestinian Authority? Palestinian Authority is a part of the, the PLO. Yes, but I think um, in 2005, Abbas was the head because Arafat had died, right? So they were, they were hoping that they could have different negotiations. The Palestinian Authority was created to manage... It was like a police force, essentially. Yeah, it was supposed area. to be the managing, the representative of the Palestinian National Authority. Yeah, and the governing body, basically, of the Palestinians, I believe, right? Yeah, it, but it was created from the PLO. Like, well, it was, like, the PLO is... It was like a different thing. 
I understand. Like, Abbas was a part of the PLO yes. the whole time. And yes. still is. But what I'm saying is that like in 2004, 2005, as the Second Intifada was capping off, it was Abbas in the Gaza Strip, I believe, that was pushing for people to chill and to be peaceful. And even as they were signing mm -hmm. peace agreements, I believe it was Hamas, and I think it was either Fatah and Hamas, or it was Hamas and Islamic Jihad, were still launching rockets and doing attacks out of the Gaza Strip, while Abbas was like, please fucking stop this bullshit. That's why when you just said, when Hamas came into power, that's why Hamas was like, okay, we're going to moderate a little bit it's because they were constantly trying to undermine the police up until like those uh, elections had even happened and up until like the end of the second intifada like hamas was undermining the process the entire time that's why and admittedly israel and everybody took a gamble having the elections hamas, and yeah good do you think hamas should have ever even had the opportunity to uh so i look at the i look at hamas the same way i look at the the ergun the early uh, israeli militias okay uh, uh specifically so they were able to modernize and become what we now know is the IDF. That's kind the way of? I see that's, mm -mm. That, that's... Wait, wait, I mean, wait, hold on, wait. Repeat that statement. The, I, see, I see Hamas as a, a group that absolutely has committed terrorist attacks, right? Yeah, Any but wait, you're comparing them to the Irgun or whatever? 100%. Well, the Irgun... In terms of the level of, of violence that was... That, that, that's sure, but the, 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 the Irgun was the most radical and fucked up of the three... Um, oh, Yishuv pre-IDF militaries, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think the majority agree, of the IDF was comprised of like the Irgun afterwards, right? It was no, the... but the Irgun was, 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 became absorbed into the IDF. Yeah, exactly. Right? Sure. Haganah was, was the biggest one, and then the Irgun became a part of them, mm -hmm. right? And then they form the idea. Sure, so I'm but that's but what you're saying there. That's uh, what uh, I hate to quote him, but like that's what Netanyahu is blaming Abbas for. Is Netanyahu is like you have not controlled Hamas. You have not brought in Hamas under the wing of the PLO or the or the Palestinian Authority. They've run rampant in the Gaza Strip. Like you haven't done anything to control it. So where is Hamas going to be brought in under that fold? Especially when they've got so much international support. Yeah, but the, the the reason why I don't buy Netanyahu's like saying, "Oh, we're not fighting, we're not gonna do peace because of Hamas, blah blah blah, and their control over the Gaza." Why are you building settlements? How the fuck does that make you more safe? How does that make you more secure? What is the excuse? I mean, both things can be simultaneously true that they don't trust Hamas yeah, and they yeah. have good reasons to do so, and the settlements are are they shouldn't be doing it. Like both of those things can be but, simultaneously but, true. Does, yeah. Does the Likud, does the Likud government? Even before the existence of Hamas, did the Likud government ever want a Palestinian state? Ever. Um, 90s, 80s, 2000s, ever. Before the Second Intifada. It never did. The Labour Party is the one that was willing to negotiate on a Palestinian state. That's probably true, yeah, because it kind of ended with, with Likud, sure. So However, the parties Hamas. are going to follow popular support because as much as we might want to disagree or fight against it, in Netanyahu's first term from 95 to 2000, 95 to, no, that can't be it, 90 to 95, or it might have been 90. Five to ninety, fuck, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. But like, even when Netanyahu was there, because he was uh, prime minister under the first Oslo Accords, we kind of argued about this before. But like, no new settlements were created in the West Bank, even though you know he would have wanted it, right? The amount of construction dramatically decreased, even though you know he would have wanted to increase it, right? If Netanyahu got to run the West Bank, it would have looked way different. But even Netanyahu has to bend to some extent to public opinion. So it's going to depend on where the public opinion is is going to dictate how much power the Likud has. Like if you tell me what does the Likud want to do, they don't give a fuck about the Palestinians. Probably, like, I don't think they yeah. want like a strong Palestinian well, they state want at all. Greater Israel. They've they, they've called for a greater Israel, which kind they of see yeah. Judea and Samaria is what they believe Jewish home. Jewish sure, but I mean like they can't do that unless they can like basically invent like seven million more uh jewish people because they know that the demographic annexation will never work right i mean they're gonna they were talking about annexing area c because mm -hmm. they would only have to give citizenship to like a hundred thousand palestinians which for is sure. something that they can uh, was like manage palpable, mm -hmm. palpable for them um anyway uh, so i'm just saying and, and we can talk about this next time because i've taken up way too much of your time uh that uh the hamas is not the reason why there isn't two states and no, I think Gaza, Arafat is the reason. <laughs> well, well, if you fucking accept kidney cancer for your country, then that's fine. But I, I as opposed to the full yeah. brain AIDS that they have right now, or I mean, kidney cancer might not no, be the worst I mean, thing. You can go get new kidneys. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I think with time, hopefully, I mean the way Israel's doing it now, and I think they're gonna, it's like gonna work against them. I think they're working towards a way to make these settlements impossible to disband.
Of course. And where a, bina- a binational state is the only solution, which is what Israel kind of doesn't want, right? But it's going in that direction. People aren't going to be living in little enclaves forever. Like, you just can't manage that. And the world wouldn't, like, be cool with that. Eventually, it's just like, okay, guys, we've killed off way too many Palestinians. We've suppressed way too many of their rights. Uh, and it starts getting treated like South Africa. And the world starts fucking embargoing Israel. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's the path they're taking. Um, that's... I don't know if I disagree with that. But do you... Okay, my last thing for you is, do you, do you agree that the statement... Uh, the Palestinians have always walked away from peace, and I'm using this in the most literal sense, Mm -hmm. always walked away from peace, and have wanted to keep fighting in this, uh, or terrorists, uh, they've listened to terrorist organizations that have wanted them to keep fighting, I forgot your exact statement. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that's factually correct, that they've always walked away from peace? Yes. God damn it, Destiny. You are uh, trying to get something out of you. Well, listen. If you, you're not, that's you're trying to flip my entire idea. No, no, that's no, not I'm not trying idea. to flip your entire. If you can give me, if you can give me, sure. If you can give me a time, yeah. Camp David was Arafat's fault. You even agreed with that, didn't you? Yeah. No, no. I'm saying you can you can say that he walked away, but I'm saying they didn't walk away from peace at Taba. They didn't walk away from peace at uh, Taba was but, Taba was failed almost going into it. We were on a transition from both yeah, yeah, the yeah, U.S. government and the. Okay, what about Clinton parameters? Did they walk away from peace? Clinton was like days from leaving office. What was this? Is like December this, fucking 40th. So when you like, say they've been walking away, when, they, when you say they've always walked away from peace, is what you mean they walked away from Camp David? Is that what you mean? Is that all you mean? Camp David was probably the last largest, yes, attempt. And maybe Taba if it would have been done more expeditiously. So only Camp David? Uh, well, no, Camp David is the big one, but prior to all of this... Give the, me another one. Well, there there weren't any because Palestinians just want to do terrorist attacks and fight. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> destiny, destiny. I can give you plenty where Israel hasn't wanted peace. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, okay wait, because I, 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 okay, at. I legitimately, my knowledge is lacking. Pre ninety three, pre Oslo Accords, what were the serious attempts? And when I say serious, I mean not like we want the full Palestinian right of return to the historic lands mm-hmm. of Israel. What were the pre ninety three offers or or negotiations yeah. for attempts? 88 is when the the Palestinian National Council accepted two states. Uh, this was when they declared, I think it was uh, the Declaration of Independence for Palestine, is they, they accepted two states. Uh, and you could actually read, you can watch a video of the guy that talked about drafting this letter and recognizing Israel as a state. Um, and since then, my argument is the only, only one place you can point to the Palestinians walking away from peace since 88 has been Camp David. And Camp David, the map looks like shit. I should have given a counter proposal. I agree. Hold on, what is the offer in 88? Like, no, There wasn't an offer in 88. It was just the first time that Palestinians recognized two states. Like, have accepted Israel as a state on the basis of the pre-67 borders. <laughs> okay. Am I supposed to give them credit for that? No, but I mean, if Israel wanted to accept that, they would have. They'd be like, okay, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. Boom. Well, what do you mean two states? It's care. not about two states. The question is, what do those two states look like? And what are the rights extended to those two states? Right? That's the whole point, right? Two for two. That. Your favorite, your your fucking best friend in your entire fucking region. Two for two somewhere. doesn't have, uh, is not a real resolution, right? <laughs> who has control of the, who has control of the security in these regions, right? What 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 are the nego- what are the uh, agreements between them look like? Does Israel get to monitor anything? Do the uh, Palestinians have an army? Do like 242 is not a real You have a lot of you have a lot of really good solid questions that are actually all pretty much answered in the link I'm about to send you is General Assembly resolution. This General Assembly resolution talks about everything oh my Borders god a general assembly resolution why would it who cares wait, wait, but they're but they're citing security councils these are these are, they're all it's refer- not but this it, this needs to involve israel palestine and the surrounding countries why do i f- give a fuck about what countries in south america think about this like but wait, okay. wait they do involve every single country in the world that that votes on this including every arab country so if every single arab country every single year for decades has agreed what else do you want them to do what else can they do? 
Hold on. What, what do you mean? Every single Arab country for decades has agreed. A lot of these places, I think even today, I don't think Syria even recognizes Israel as a country. What is Lebanon's like current world. relation with okay. Israel as a country? What do you mean? Like everybody recognizes all those and states. And Syria, Syria and Lebanon, every single country has accepted Israel security, Israel as a country, as soon as this gets implemented. That's what the peace initiative was for. The Arab League unanimously agreed. Unanimously. Not a fucking single Arab country disagreed with this res uh, uh, with the- Okay, what does this resolution like, call for? The peaceful settlement on the question of Palestine. Does so that mean the infinite right of return? No, no, no. Actually, if you look up it, it, Control Command F, or uh, if you have an Apple or whatever, uh, 194, I think it references it somewhere here as saying some just solution to re refugees, but. Okay, so this doesn't answer anything. It's just another vague wipe my ass, like, figure it out. Is it though? Yeah, a just resolution of the problem in, in like, Parsi, yeah. Uh, just 194. Looks, yeah. So anyway, I'm saying you can say the Arabs are the hold on. Walked away this resolution is from 1948. Is this the one that calls for full right of return? Because this would have been right after the Nakba. Hold on, hold on. This resolution, I don't know if it's 1948, but they've reaffirmed or renewed the resolutions that are in this every single year. So when a resolution gets passed, it's not only applicable for that year and it's gone. They re, the the UN General Assembly votes on like a list of resolutions that they had passed in the that they had already passed previously, and they reaffirm them. Like, yep, this is still applicable. Yep, this is still applicable. You'll hear people say. The whole world votes on the question of Palestine every single year, and it's only Israel and the U.S. and a couple of islands that vote against. Every single year, same vote every year. Israel's the only one, along with the U.S., that don't want to do it. That's why when you say Arabs have always walked away from peace, it's, I believe, a historical. They haven't always wanted to walk away from peace. At least Okay, hold on. Since I, I, okay, hold on. I, I'm... I'm I don't know anything about this, but I know so much peripheral information, it can't be what you're telling me, okay? Sure. It cannot be the fact that in December of 1948, when Israel declares independence and conquers all this territory and stolen land, mm -hmm. that from that mm -hmm. point onwards, all the Arab states are like, we need a two-state nope, solution, guys. No, no, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. So, so again, so, so uh, let me, let me, uh, let me uh, clarify. So the Palestinians didn't accept 242 until I want to say the 80s. Jordan didn't accept it until the peace treaty. Uh, Egypt accepted it in 79. They all eventually accepted it, right? And then the UN historically has always accepted it, regardless of what the Arabs said, regardless of what the Israelis said, they've kept re accepting uh, 242 and all of these slur of, a, a slew of other resolutions. Um, and as of today, everyone accepts it. Actually, as of 20 years ago, everyone accepts it. Okay, are you sure that this Resolution 194 doesn't just call for a full right of return? It does, but in Ugh, wait, the Wait, you just told me that, in the very beginning. In the res read the General Assembly, what it says. I'm just, saying a just resolution of the problem of Palestine refugees in conformity with its Resolution 194. What does that mean to you, in conformity? What that means to me is what Palestinians have asked for Every single time they've negotiated, they've not once asked for, and you can prove me wrong, not once asked for the return of 7 million refugees. In Oslo, in Camp David, all of these, so when they say a just Well, no, of course they, they don't. Hold on. They don't because what you're talking, hold on. You can't compare real shit like negotiations with fake shit like UN General Assembly resolutions, okay? In the, I agree with you that in the negotiations, in the real shit, nobody's calling for that full return because obviously that's a non-starter and it's stupid. But in UN General Assembly resolutions, yeah, you it's know, you get right in stupid. here and it is, it yeah. you know, expresses the wish that every male had a penis enlargement pill that would grow their dick to be 15 inches long. Like, yeah, who the fuck cares, right? But like this, this resolution that you keep giving me as an example, like, look, they're really trying to make peace because they accept this no, resolution. I'm not giving you a, I'm okay, not giving wait. You a single resolution. What is I'm the, you an entire yes, what is the point of you citing, okay, hold on. What is the point of you citing this resolution uh, 7725 or whatever, the one that you linked me? What was the sure, point of you citing sure, this? Sure, sure, because I believe this is the basis for creating two states on the question of Palestine. And I believe that 
in this, there's going to be multiple security councils that are re uh, resolutions that have been reaffirmed year after year that the world has agreed upon. At some point, I think in year 2001, only America and Israel rejected. The whole world agreed upon. This is the basis for the two states. That's why I think we had a misunderstanding the last time we were talking because I kept saying. Wait, hold on. Wait, can I, let me run back real quick. Wait. So what is the point of you citing this again? When you say that the Palestinians and Arabs yes. never wanted, don't don't want peace and want to keep fighting. Correct. I'm saying they're voting on this resolution to accept Israel as a state. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me let me clarify. I, th I thought that like everything was implied, but let me be more explicit. When I say the Palestinians want to keep fighting, what I'm saying is the Palestinians want to keep fighting for from river to sea. That's what I mean. What does that mean to you? As in essentially like one state. Mm -hmm. Okay. With what the biggest deciding point, I don't, I have never in my life heard of, and I, I could be wrong. You have a basis for that. Sure. Like, okay. Sure. You gotta, you gotta, and like, I'm going to do the thing where I ask you a question. It's kind of shitty, but but maybe you can you can convince me otherwise through another argument. Okay. And because I've just never heard this before, but this might be a position I'm not aware of. I have never heard of somebody debating for a two-state solution that includes an infinite right of return to the primary state of Israel. That just sounds like two different Palestinian states. Does that sound reasonable to you? You're telling me that this General Assembly thing is an example of all the world being in favor of establishing a two-state solution, but part of this General Assembly resolution harkens back to 194, which calls for an infinite right okay. of return. Okay, so you don't like the wording around the, you know, a just problem to the refugees in conformity with 194. You don't, you don't like because that. Because 194 calls for an infinite Maybe. right of return, yes. Okay, okay. Well, that framing, I would argue, isn't, I'm not taking it literally the way you are in terms of 194 has to be fully implemented. I what does conforms to mean? Hold on, stop. We got to, at some point, we got to be in the real world. What does conform to mean? If I tell you, you need to draft a straight, a, a state law that conforms to the federal regulations here, what do you think that means? Conf in conformity you with. You know what? Even if I'll concede to okay. your point that you're making right now, even if I were to concede, do you think that this one line is the reason why Israel's voting no? There's probably a lot of vague bullshit in here for why Israel votes no, I would guess. One of them being 242, being in there. Because Israel does not want to pull to those pre-67 uh, borders. Probably, yeah, I would Just imagine don't... so, yeah, of course. Okay, okay, so if, there's, if Israel's starting point is the facts on the ground and they're continually building settlements, to make the starting point shift in their favor, mm -hmm. do you see a pro do you see how Palestinians would want to resort to violence if no one gives a fuck? Here is like listen. Said. Here is the, I understand. Fun. Sure, I can understand why. Yes, okay. If you are genetically gifted with sixty five IQ and all of your lineage is, is permanently gimped in that way, I can understand it. Okay, the rationale you're giving me is why Palestinians have fought decade after decade after decade after decade. If you think that you can keep fighting and it'll turn out better, then go for it, okay? But in 48, after 48, I think there were people saying like, well, maybe 47 wasn't that bad, okay? Maybe the British plan was not bad. After the Six Day War, people were like, okay, well, fuck, let's go back to the pre-Six Day War borders. Resolution 242, this is bullshit. After Yom Kippur, Egypt was like, please, God, stop invading us and we want peace. Mm -hmm. And then after, you know, and then if things go forward and yeah, more people say peace, like, yeah, so the fighting has been fighting and fighting. You're like, don't you understand why they want to fight? Don't you understand why they fight? Yeah, every time they fucking fight, they lose. They're literally the Black Knight from Monty Python, okay, getting limb after limb after limb chopped off and being like, okay, well, sure. yeah, of course I'm going to keep fighting. I lost this? all my limbs. Like, okay, well, what are you going to stop? It's obviously it's not so working. How about we, Sorry, God. How do we agree on this? How do we agree on this? Okay. Palestinians were fighting for the longest time for all of Palestine up yeah. until. 88. Do you disagree with that? Um, I could probably broadly agree with that. Okay. So since 88 mm -hmm. until today, okay, the settlements haven't stopped. They've expanded. They've more homes have been demolished. The occupation has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And Israel has yet to acknowledge Palestine as a state, as Palestinians did 40 years ago. So you always put this onus on the Palestinians that just want to fight forever. Because the terrorist attacks and all of the fighting hasn't stopped. 
Why why is Israel not blamed for the quote unquote terrorist attacks, right? If we just They do, bro. We've got, got like 7 and... billion different UNHCR resolutions and Amnesty International statements and global declarations and blah blah blah. What do you mean? Why isn't Israel no, blamed? No, they get blamed all the fucking time. <laughs> your, your your argument that you're giving me is, well, Israel Israel hasn't accepted the two states because of all of the terrorist attacks, right? And then we also agreed that since 2005, the PLO has or 20 years ago, the PLO has or hasn't organized any terrorist attack. Actually, what they have done is with the help of uh, one of Israeli's internal, like internal version of the Mossad, arrested suspected terrorists to try to appease the state of Israel. And if you want sources on that, happy to give you it. So let's start with that because you give me like some faces. So. Okay. Fuck, wait, I'm real quick. Do you want to do this? Um, do you want to do this thing? Yeah, let's 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 continue later. Tomorrow? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's continue later. It sounds like you're pro Palestinian. I appreciate your support. It's welcomed. Uh, you support two states on the basis of the pre sixty seven borders. Um, so yeah, sounds good. Talk to yeah, you tomorrow. I think the argument for tomorrow, the thing that I would gear it towards, is when you consider a two-state solution, unless you want to do some weird like three-state solution, I think Gaza probably has to be considered alongside the PLO. I don't know if from the Israeli perspective, if it's just satisfying to say, well, the PLO hasn't necessarily done anything in the West Bank, which for the last 20 years, I think is largely true. But like, unless you want to negotiate like an individual state in just the West Bank, which I don't think the Palestinians want to do either. I, like, no, I don't no, know. No. I think we can discuss, I, can, I think I'm gonna bring you, uh, uh, we'll discuss how big of an obstacle of peace was Hamas in 2005, 2004, 2003, and prior when they accepted the existence of Israel. They ex not the existence of Israel, I'm sorry. No, they never accepted Israel. I'm wrong, I misspoke. Uh, they accepted a Palestinian state within the pre-67 borders. This is Hamas speaking. That's what they've accepted. Sure. Okay. If you want, if you want to bring that, if you want to bring that up, we can look at that. But I'm almost positive I was either talking to you or somebody else that I looked this up, and the acceptance of that was bullshit. That they were just saying that, and there was plenty of reason to believe that they didn't mean it. But you can look that up. But look up a little bit around that because I don't want you to bring it up and think it's a big killer point. And then I look it up and it's like, oh, well, they didn't mean this shit. Because I feel like we looked no, no, that I'll up. Look up I'll look up. Sure. I'll look up a lot around that. I'll okay. dig into it, and I'll dig into after the blockade. Who was the first to attack? I'll, uh, I'll look into. Okay. Sure. To, uh, to be yeah, clear, yeah. after like blockades and truces, I'm not a huge stickler on like who attacks first unless you've got like a real big attack because like both Israel and the people around them break this shit all the fucking time. Like I think people I, I, were read I, it really I, critical because on the last peace treaty, Hamas like bombed like two things afterwards, but it's like usually Israel is like everybody's going back and forth like right after these truces and shit and they've done that historically too. So unless there's like a huge attack that like violates like a, a long piece or something, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah. I, I just want to be clear with my stance before I go. Mm -hmm. I wish Hamas doesn't exist didn't exist okay it's a fucking dream and i unfortunately feel like people that have been living impoverished under horrible conditions have seen negotiations go nowhere and that is the only reason i believe hamas won the election in 2006 because they've lost all hope for diplomacy now we can talk about that more later thank you for the discussion sorry for taking up so much time no you're good I learned a lot uh talk to you talk to you later take be, care yeah be careful